beloved one, I hope you are doing well. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed and stay blessed. I believe in you. I believe in your word and the perfect truth. I believe in you. So I lay down my cross that the cross might be found in you. So fill me up. Till I overflow, I want to run. your hands and just be quiet in his presence. Just lift your hands to the heavens. Everywhere inside and his glory is mighty in this place. Hmm. Just lift your hands to his glory. Just lift your hands. Of your presence, we your temple. We give you reverence. Now arise from your throne. And be blessed by our praise as we glory 
in your embrace. Let your power now feel this place. Lord, we wait on you. For you are that river that flows from Zion, bringing healing, bringing salvation. We have come tonight, O oh God, expecting you to bless us. We are not in a hurry. We are not in a hurry. We will wait. Oh, no. Just keep your hands lifted. For in your presence there's fullness of joy and our strength shall be restored as we wait upon I will wait For in your presence there's fullness of joy and our strength will be restored for we wait upon the Lord yes we wait upon the Lord oh wait on him there is strength coming upon you we wait upon the Lord we wait upon the Lord we wait upon the Lord Lord, we wait on you. You are drawing strength from the throne. Don't you think you are wasting time at all? This is part of the meeting. Already he's doing miracles. He's touching people by his anointing. Touching people by his anointing. No man is able to respond to your situation. We're invoking an anointing that is greater than us. Power that is greater than us. Hear the Spirit say unto me, lay your burdens down. Lay your burdens down. That's what the Holy Spirit is telling me. Lay your burdens down. The bills, the sickness, the frustrations. For I am able, said the Spirit of God. I am able, said the Spirit of God. Lay your burdens down. You have allowed your situations to overwhelm you. You have allowed your situations to be cloud your faith. I am still able. I am still able, said the Spirit of God. I am still able. That's what the Lord is telling us tonight. I am able. You may not know how the miracle will come to pass, but I am able. I am able. That's what the Lord is saying. I'm moving ahead of you into that area of darkness. The Lord is giving people miracles, responding to your individual needs. I may not know what they are, but you came for koinonia. The God of heaven is meeting men at the point of their needs. 
I go before you. I go before you. I go before you. I'm seeing what looks like a cleaner. God is saying, I'm erasing your mistakes. That's what God is saying to someone. I'm erasing your mistakes. I'm erasing your past. I'm giving you a new beginning. I'm giving you a new beginning. A new beginning. Yes, we someone I'm restoring your dreams and visions that's what God is saying I'm restoring I'm restoring your dreams those encounters you used to have those supernatural encounters you stopped writing for a long time because the visitation ceased tonight the oil is being opened and released onto you it's like a fragrance you are receiving it it's coming upon your life that's what the spirit is saying it's time to come back to the secret place. It's time to come back to the secret place. For someone the Lord is ministering. You used to spend time with me two hours every night. But you stopped. You stopped. There were all kinds of distractions. But the Lord is saying I'm still waiting for you. In that place of encounter. I'm still waiting for you. To show you great things. To show you great things. To show you great things. The Lord is speaking to a man here. You are an engineer. And he's saying do not give up. I'm about to step into your life. Do not give up. The Lord gave you a word by January that he will honor you. But as it is you've not seen anything. No projects. No work. But the Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's stepping in, even in this glory. Stepping in in this glory. There are a number of ladies here. You really used to hear God with clarity. But all kinds of distractions came into your life and sincerely for a long time. You cannot say you really had God with a clear direction. But the Lord is bringing a restoration right now. That's what is happening. The hearing ears. God is opening your ears once again. To start hearing the voice of the Spirit. With clarity. I'm seeing, I'm seeing green grasses. That's what I'm seeing. The Lord is bringing freshness to your spiritual life. That life of staleness. Staleness carrying yesterday's grace yesterday's glory the lord is replacing it with something new and fresh thank you jesus you alone will do these things and glorify yourself. You have come tonight to experience His grace. The anointing of the Spirit is strong. Let's just flow with what God is doing. Lord, let no burden remain. Let no burden remain. Let no burden remain. According to your promises, I can stand secure. Would you carve upon my heart? This truth that sets me free According to your word, oh Lord Bring it unto me
Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, says the works that I do shall also do greater works than this shall be. Spirit of God, we thank you for your presence. speaking a word to someone and he's saying the harassment comes to stop it comes to full stop tonight the harassment in dreams that spirit that comes to you to oppress you the harassment stops the harassment stops by the anointing of the Holy Spirit the harassment stops the harassment stops But thou, oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. But thou, oh Lord, had a shield for me. expecting a touch you're already touching people in the name of Jesus please everyone just lay your right hand on your tummy this is the instruction God is giving let's just act lay your right hand on your tummy please no instruments everything just stop let's, let's just obey what the Lord is saying just lay your right hand on your tummy don't mind me this is what the Holy Ghost is telling me. Now, there are many of you who are going to be receiving strange graces for the next level. Supernatural direction. It will come like fire inside and outside. Right now, oh God, confirm your word with power across this building and in every of the overflows. Right now, just keep your hands on your stomach. Miracles. Shabakataya. Let it leave the heavens and come to the earth. Miracles. Miracles. Everywhere. Outside, there is a mighty angelic walk. It's like an impregnation that is happening outside. Strange signs outside. In every one of the overflows. Strange signs of the spirit. Strange signs. There are two ladies at my back in the worship team. I see the power of God touching you right now. Strange signs, that fire from your innermost being. From your innermost being right now. The Lord is doing that miracle across the entire auditorium. He's touching people. Let's just let him do what he's doing. Because this is the answer to your prayer. This is why you have prayed. You can't stand it. Lord, let it leave your throne. Let it not be restrained in the heavens until it steps into the destinies of your people this is what they have prayed for they have fasted for it they have prayed they have fasted they have prayed they have fasted then let it come oh god let it come oh god the grace that can open strange doors strange testimonies strange testimonies 
Just the guitar. Just play minors, just on the guitar. Go ahead. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not the bass guitar. Just keep your hands on your stomach. The Lord is doing a miracle. The Lord is saying, He's stepping into the finances of families. This is what I'm hearing. That's why He told me, Let the guitar play because He wants to speak. The Lord is doing miracles in finance, in the finances of many families right now. I'm hearing favor, financial favor. I'm releasing financial favor. You will hear the testimony. It will start in your life. It will flow to your family. That's what the Lord is saying. Where are they, oh God? Touch them, touch them, touch them, touch them. Bring performance to your word. Bring creation to your word. Financial miracles financial miracles the lord is saying it's time to move to the next level he's speaking to families it's time to move financially there is a mantle coming i'm seeing it like a dew it's like the dew of heaven if it comes upon you it's your family he's talking about if it comes upon you expect it don't just receive expect a testimony i don't know how it will happen but if you are affected by this prophetic word then your family is under the influence of a financial anointing Lord, spare not your hands. Stretch it from the heavens. Stretch it from the heavens. Release financial miracles. That's what the Lord is saying. For many of you, it will do you like a dream. You wouldn't even know how it will happen. Supernatural connections, strategic alliances by the Spirit of God. Meeting the people that matter. Meeting the people that matter. Financial saviors, financial helpers. Joseph of Arimathea's rising for you. Rising for you. This is what you have prayed for. It is important that you receive testimonies. You receive miracles. There is a lady you traveled from the south. Like a, one of the Yoruba countries. You came all the way from the south. And you came asking the Lord to visit your family. Right now, the miracle is already beginning for your family. Such an invasion of the spirit of God. It's bringing light to every area of darkness. There is a brother, the Lord is speaking. He's saying, leave the wedding date at September. Don't move it. Leave it there. I will make it happen. It will be by my spirit. The Lord is speaking to a brother. Leave the wedding date at September. Leave it there. Don't change it because of finances. I will move and go ahead of you. I will move and go ahead of you. I will move and go ahead of you. The Lord is speaking to a woman here, not a young lady, a woman. The dream that I gave you July 2012 is about to come to pass the dream that i gave you july 2012 july 2012 is coming to pass speedily july 2012 that dream that i gave you july 2012 is coming to pass a miracle is coming for a gentleman by the name musa musa a gentleman by the name musa the lord is bringing a miracle for him right now God is healing a lady of appendicitis. Appendicitis. That's what, that's what it is. You don't know, but you've been having severe pain. Severe pain. It's appendicitis. And the Lord is bringing a miracle right now.
There is a man here, you've been trusting God for promotion. This is five years. Five years. The Lord says in the next three months, your letter will arrive. In the next three months and you will testify. Pay attention to the prophetic words. There is grace to make them come to pass. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please be seated if you can. Just leave those under the anointing. Just sit if you can. God is doing strange things tonight. There are three ladies. This will come upon supernatural laughter in a very strange way they can't control it i will worship you forever love you forever this god is too don't just bring people out like that please this is a prophetic experience they'll never be able to stop the laughter it's not it's not about what they want to do is a is a message i will worship you forever love you forever because i prophesy to all three of you let your family step into a season of laughter right now i release that anointing even as you are laughing i release it in the name of jesus there is authority in your laughter i declare by that authority in the name that is above all names in the name that is above all names the lord is bringing miracles to people glorify yourself oh god in the name of jesus listen we do business in this kingdom on the strength of mysteries mysteries are secret codes of operation he said the secrets of the lord are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants there is a way to make things happen in the spirit madam the witchcraft in your family dies forever it leaves your family right now i command that spirit you take your hands of her life in the name of Jesus Christ. James, 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 you are a visitor. Who is that? Is there someone like that? James. There's someone called James. He's a visitor. This is your first time of coming. Run. The Lord wants to use you and bring a miracle to your family. But look at me. God needs to save you. Huh? There are many things wrong with your life. Many things. Huh? You are a bad boy. God is going to change your entire life. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not insulting you, but there will be a miracle for you right now. Because the hand of God is upon your life, but there is a spirit that is destroying you. A spirit that is destroying you. I cast that spirit right now. Let it live your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you can use anybody and anything. You brought James out. In the name of Jesus. Let me talk to one more lady. Helene. I'm hearing a name. Helene. Is there someone with that name? Helene. Come. Who came with you? Came alone. You came alone. But why am I seeing a man standing near you? 
listen if there is a spirit tormenting you let her go now i curse you by the god of heaven in the name of jesus this has stopped her life tied everything i'm seeing everything under chains there is a man standing and this man is shouting and saying he's married to you i curse you by the god of heaven hold my hands in the name of jesus that spirit lives your life forever i bring you complete deliverance in the name of jesus are you married that's it for your marriage this is the reason why you're not married are you hearing what i'm saying because this has been your prayer this has been your desire anything you start and i need to pray for you because your stomach is swelling it's even embarrassing you you are thinking it's because you are eating too much if i don't pray for you they will tell you something like fibroid is growing and we have to pray we cause it it dies a natural death and goes back there that person that comes to oppress you in your dream never returns to you again forever in the name of jesus and may doors open for you strangely in the name of jesus christ our time is gone um, there are three things three keys three mysteries that can invoke the manifested presence of God the manifest presence of God in the life of a man in a ministry I wanted to start a series on throne room encounters but the Lord asked me to talk about this number one is obedience we're going to be fast because I want us to pray God still wants to visit people my sister come this lady um, where the usher is standing that gentleman right one two three just your rope the third lady come no not you the lady at your back come yes she's the one you come please please save our time um, the lord says i should prophesy to you that the rejected stone becomes the chief cornerstone the rejected stone becomes the chief cornerstone you may look at yourself and think you are nobody you may look at yourself and think you are a weak person this is what has been destroying you you compare yourself with people you have been crying simply because you are not doing well you are not doing well in anything and then people have been insulting you and this has made you to feel so bad while you were sitting there the lord opened my eyes and i saw a lot of misery you see the lady crying you see let me tell you there are all kinds of people seated in this place tonight when you see people just sitting you may not know what is destroying them eating them up because the destiny that i see is far different from what i see right now this is already putting a lot of pressure you love god but you know this sense of inferiority is killing you and eating you up the lord is saying i should tell you the rejected stone will later become the chief cornerstone Lord Jesus, I pray for this dear lady. There is nobody you cannot change. There is nobody you cannot touch. May the God that I serve visit you. May he give you a new beginning. I cut you away from bad friends and bad influences that make you try to do things to belong. No. Leave them this night. Don't have anything to do with them. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, Madam, you are asking the Lord to talk to me that I should minister to you. I'm hearing your prayer. Come. You are praying and your prayer is coming to my ears. You are bowing your head and you are saying, Oh God, please let this man talk to me. What is the relationship between you and the woman sitting close to you? She's my elder sister. Do I know? Come. Because I'm seeing that the miracle is not just for you alone, but God is doing something for the family. Please stand up. Now. Kai, this woman has suffered seriously. I look at this woman, I'm seeing pains 
you are a very kind woman but what is this thing that makes you in trouble all sorts of trouble where is your husband what's he doing madam god needs to visit three things that's what the lord is showing me number one is your finances things are dying in your family that thing your husband is doing before he collects his salary he's already owing there is serious trouble you have cried about this thing it's even causing trouble for you people at home right yes, now sir. is that true yes sir. your husband is in in fact sometimes he looks as if you know you have to look at yourself and say am i irritating this man yes, because sir. of the way he's behaving you are even yes. suspecting that maybe he's having an affair with somebody yes, else sir. The Lord is ending this confusion for you because you are a kind woman. There is a spirit responsible for your tragedy. This woman is a very kind woman, but I'm seeing bad luck everywhere you go. That's what I'm seeing. There's nothing you do that works. See, let me tell you, the power of God. Look at this family crying. You know, sometimes people think we just do these things because we are emotional and we are wasting time. Did you know there are people, as they are sitting down there, that's their last opportunity. They are saying, they will now go to a prophet or somebody and he will tell them, bring 100,000. Bring 200,000. Remove your clothes. Let me bath you. Let me do this. And then after that one, you add all kinds of things. Because I'm looking at this woman and I'm seeing a lot of struggle. The same spirit causing you pain is what wants to destroy her life. And destroy what is supposed to be an, a source of joy for her marriage huh we have to pray did you come alone they're crying i think our official assignment yesterday she told me about your story i supposed to go back to Abu Dhabi. yeah my Changed three universities for my son. It's a drug addict. My first son, 23 years. A drug addict. Where is he? He's in Abuja. Suleiman. It's not just that this boy is a drug addict. Ah, I don't like what I'm seeing, no. Because they want to convert this boy. That's what I'm saying. This is, this is not a nice thing. We are going to pray. Truly this woman has suffered. But things are going to change. Your husband needs a miracle. A big miracle. Do you know this woman is so kind. She's not even concerned about herself. She would rather not have clothes than for her children. This is the kind of woman I'm seeing in the spirit. I sold my car to pay school fees. I sold my car to pay my sons. Can you work on this technical or Shadrach? Are you doing something wrong? I sold my car to pay my son's school Your fees. Your car? To pay whose school fees? My son's school fees. The boy that is. Oh, yes. look at this. Where is he? See, let me tell you may god make this never be your testimony you don't know what it means the child you are waiting for trusting that god will use him to wipe your tears and the devil just hijacks his destiny now no car and the son is not even serious i need to pray for you because you have not slept very well in days madam i'm looking at your sister and i'm seeing that you have not slept i'm hearing you people saying what what is wrong with our family especially the girls the ladies in your family that's what you you are the one who is saying that thing you are telling her i'm seeing you people in a discussion and you you are telling her what is wrong with our family all the ladies they are virtuous they love god but nothing good comes out of it and there are families like this seated looking at me is that true madam yes sir because i'm hearing a conversation and she's asking you we are saying, seven, seven ladies, seven how women. many of you seven of us how who is doing well among you nobody you see what i'm saying seven ladies nobody is doing well and all of them are serious and nice virtuous ladies they either get married to foolish men yes. or get married to all kinds of things yes, sir. where is number four who is number four among them it's our mother 
Huh? Her mother. There is a miracle that God wants to give her because the Lord said that she's number four in the order is visiting her. My dear, please calm down. What happened to your mother in her marriage? The devil wants to bring it to happen to you. We are going to destroy. Their father is not with her mother. That's what I'm saying. We are going to destroy because this one so I will worship him forever. Love him forever because this God is too good. I will worship him forever. Love him forever. Because this God is too good. Bring that lady who shouted. There is a miracle God wants to give her family. Is it okay if I just continue ministering, please? I know I'm supposed to share something, but the the thing God is doing now, God wants to talk to people. Let's let's just let him solve serious problems here. It's your time for breakthrough. Stand up. You come. I came all the way an angel of the lord was walking and said i should follow him and he brought me to your place come it's time for god to wipe your tears you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor i just want to say thank you thank you you get the glory you get the glory hallelujah we don't kill but i'm seeing someone's uncle dying i'm seeing that man in a shrine concocting something and saying all the ladies would not marry but i'm seeing like thunder striking him that's what the lord is should help that lady right now i'm seeing it happen i announce our victory if i be a servant of the lord right now may the earth open and swallow them i speak it by the anointing of the holy ghost any man sitting on what belongs to you any man sitting on your glory jimmy god is bringing a miracle for your sister i'm seeing your sister i'm seeing your face and i'm seeing her still flash is she here come i didn't even know that she's here i'm seeing the lord is saying he's bringing a miracle for her i'm seeing somebody clean footprints on the ground that's what i'm seeing you are moving and you are leaving footprints and the footprints i see flies all around it but i'm seeing someone cleaning cleaning it and the lord is saying i should tell you remember not the former things not consider the things of old he says i should tell you behold i will do a new thing god will begin a strange walk in your life and it's going to surprise you a strange walk you have a desire for god you sincerely love god and let me tell you the desire is not a waste the same way your brother is loving god and being passionate look at me it's not about perfection it's about sincerity of motive the, the journey to self-perfection is unnecessary and exhausting what God requires is a sincere desire from you. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the anointing that will wipe the past of this lady's life, the past that eats you, I curse it by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus, may your conscience be purged by the blood. May the water of the word cleanse you. And may grace be supplied unto you. For a new dimension for a new level i release this grace upon you in the name of the lord jesus christ let's go to exodus 40 33 please exodus 40 33 we really have to be fast <sighs> exodus 40 33 moses wanted to once again experience the manifested presence of God but you could not see that presence find expression until his obedience was perfected complete 
let me tell you something half obedience is not obedience at all half obedience you must obey to the latter god is very meticulous about his instructions are we together now and so god kept watching as they attempted building it and then 40 verse 33 he says and he read up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up for the hanging of the court gate right read the last sentence if you have open there he says so moses finished the work he finished building according to pattern obeyed as instructed to the latter and something happened in the next verse 34 he says then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of the lord filled the tabernacle the word glory is the hebrew word kabod the essence the fullness the expression of all that makes a man what he is or whatever deity so when we say the glory of god the effulgence of his person right filled the temple 35 and moses was not able to enter the tent of congregation because the cloud abode thereon and the glory of the lord filled the temple when you are obedient you will see the glory of the lord in your life in most remarkable ways you don't have to be a pastor to see the glory of god you don't have to be a man of god once you are kingdom compliant the sacrifice of complying with the principles of the kingdom then you are authorized to experience the glory you see you may not be able to see all of the clouds and all of that but the glory of god is made manifest in miracles strange testimonies dramatic operations of the hands of god that leaves you baffled everyone who sees you knows that this is by the finger of god that's somebody's testimony tonight in the name of the lord jesus christ grace to obey grace to obey you must cry for it complete obedience gives you access access to experiencing the glory number two the second key to experiencing the manifestation of god's glory is prayer prayer matthew chapter 7 17 matthew 17 verse 1 to 8 matthew 17 Matthew 17 verse 1 to 8 this was the encounter that we call the transfiguration of Jesus I apologize for the inability of the media to switch for now please just bear with us I'm sure they are working on it and after six days listen Jesus taketh Peter James and John his brother and bringeth them up into a high mountain privately there are certain things in the kingdom that are not just for christians listen i know we have this idea that yes god doesn't want to hide anything from us but you see the dispensation of spiritual realities is according to the degree to which the spirit of god can trust you there are certain trust levels if you have not attained certain deep mysteries of the kingdom cannot be committed to you the bible says that he was one who called all the disciples but he took three and he says there is something i want to show you privately what did he show them privately a mystery the bible says and was transfigured before them listen he went to the place of prayer and that transfiguration began and the bible says his face did shine like the sun and his raiment was as white as the light and behold there appeared unto them moses and elijah talking with him listen verse 4 he says then then answered peter and said unto jesus lord it is good for us to be here if thou wilt let us make this and that and that and that you know and then he was just speaking and so on and so forth and then the bible says verse 5 while he yet spoke jesus was communicating with them in the place of prayer and he was trying to make an arrangement and the bible says behold a bright cloud 
overshadowed them and then behold a voice spoke out of the cloud and said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased hear ye him verse 6 he says and when the disciples heard it they fell on their face and they were much terrified he says and jesus came and touched them and said arise and be not afraid and when they had lifted up their eyes they saw no man except jesus only listen there is a dimension of the glory of god you will never experience until the ministry of prayer brings you there you can do every bible study you know to do you can read every concordance takes and so on and so forth there is a decree of open heavens the manifestation of the glory of god upon a man's life that is a direct answer to the ministry of prayer are we together now he spake a parable luke 18 verse 1 unto them to the end that men ought always to pray and not to say it he spake a parable by prayer i don't just mean oh god give me tea give me bread that's just, that's petition 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 give me tea give me bread that's petition hallelujah the kind of prayer i'm talking about is the type that is said in the book of james effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man you see let me tell you there is nothing in your life that can substitute for the absence of a healthy life of prayer no matter your word level it would show when a man does not have an altar that is alive an altar of prayer the first thing that disappears is discernment discernment is lack of discernment is spiritual blindness what lack of discernment is to the realm of the spirit that's what blindness is in the physical realm the moment a man is close to the impulses of the activities of the spirit there is no effect of them. so things happen around our lives and we we become victims we become um, um, victims of the effects of things that happen not the initiators of the faith the minister of prayer it was on the strength of prayer that when satan spoke to peter jesus looked at him and said get thee behind me satan and he said, Peter, Satan desired by discernment. He desired to sift you like wheat. He said, but I have what? What was the antidote? Prayed for you, not discussed with him. I prayed for you, Peter. Something is wrong with your discernment. You didn't even know when the Holy Ghost was speaking to you. You just said, I am the Christ. And the Spirit took over your voice. You didn't even know the difference. He said, I prayed for you. Because that's what is wrong sense of a healthy altar of prayer it has numbed your discerning ability there are many believers here and it's sad if you are a leader here and you are a pastor believe me if you don't pray you will your discernment will be dark and blocked one of the greatest advantage of walking in the spirit is access to feeling the impulses of the environment of the spirit the realm of the spirit is a real realm like the physical realm right when you get born again and you are filled with the holy ghost as you begin to pray the first thing that happens to you is an activation of the ability to interact with the atmosphere of the spirit it may start in dreams it may start in visions it could be dramatic but then your spirit listen to my message spiritual perception your impulses of the spirit right they be, you begin to pick signals there is danger uh -uh. God does not want me to go here. He doesn't have to give you a reason. Lack of prayer has got a lot of catastrophe. Not all these things will just stroll around. 30 minutes, one hour, you just throw back. It's called the effectual fervent. You don't have time to fervent. You add passion to it. And as far as your passion can drive you, that's the validity of the prayer time. It's not about saying, I'll pray for 10 minutes or five hours or eight hours you will pray until the nothing of the spirit releases you you are praying to burn things in the spirit not for the formality of religion the problem with the prayer ministry is that most people pray to feel spiritual 
and then maybe to intimidate themselves their little group so if i pray for 30 minutes you add 30 minutes to it and it makes you look spiritual no when you are a spiritual man there is always an object that drives you to the prayer part time and as you pray you keep checking the rewards of your victory as against the impulse and stop only when that victory is established this is where we move it when elijah prayed was it just according to desire he wanted an effect first time he prayed only god knows how long that was he said go and check there was no result what did he do again we stop we stop because it's two hours we use earthly time to gauge certain things you see the 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 things we are contending against sometimes will require time and certain dynamics of spiritual operation to produce victory so if you have this idea that because you are you want to pray you just sense god wants to speak to you and then you pray for 30 minutes or one hour and you feel i am okay you see you are using a wrong timing the same way if you pray for eight hours just blindly and religiously and think because you pray for eight hours it means you are making contact with the spirit no sir you pray according to the guidance of the spirit the spirit of god instructs you he navigates you your prayer there is a connection between a burden in the spirit and something in the realm of the spirit and you pray until there is a release when the servant came and said i've seen the sign elijah stopped at once he didn't say let me just continue since i've gone so far he stopped at once because prayer has a purpose once the purpose is achieved stop and move on in action brothers and sisters hear me especially for those who are workers those who are students those who are maybe business people and so on and so forth the the propensity for negligence in the place of prayer is very high are we together as a student you have lecture in the morning sometimes marathon lectures you're finishing in the evening you may have fellowship or you have certain things the truth is when you calculate it you find out that there's no time for quality prayer are we together now you see the most important thing about prayer it's not necessarily praying eight, eight hours every day at your level you cannot pray eight hours every day you'll be irresponsible in your activity the key is to maintain the fire and set periodic times when you compensate for the absence of the secret place. at least i expect everybody once a week you should be able to have some time when you can dedicate certain things and let me tell you in my life one of the biggest secrets of my prayer life is the mystery of night prayers i can tell you this ask any man that prays the night time is when men, men gain crowns in the spirit why do you think people die in the night when they sleep why do you think people's sicknesses and diseases amplify in the night there are many mysteries we don't know in the body of maximize your night time especially for many of us here because we are young establish things in the night don't crash into trouble and then you are wondering what to do in the day the daytime is for manifestation we settle realities in the night believe me it will not rob you of sleep it's just a little sacrifice of prayer that will bring you tremendous power I hear God clearly at night there are times I go outside and I just sit down everyone has slept I just sit down outside and I'm meditating many of us have been seated in the night time the devil has studied your spiritual life and he has seen your area of vulnerability let me tell you something do you know there is something called slumber I hope you know it's a spirit uncontrolled passion for sleep you are passionate about sleep i'm not just talking of resting you know you are tired and you are resting some of us is a spirit no matter how you plan to pray once it's night even if you slept from morning till that time you are just going to thank the lord lord i bless you and snore your way to the morning it's a spirit if no one has told you something is wrong with your destiny many politicians and businessmen their time of meeting is in the night witches and wizards and demons that do all kinds of things 
you take advantage of the mysteries in the spirit there are times and seasons that grant you access by grace you see if you do not know these things if you do not know these things you will you will miss out on a lot of things why is it called the lost supper not the lord's breakfast not the lord's lunch why was it done in the night because there was no time no it was a mystery i pray for every dead prayer life here or every prayer life that is need driven father i'm coming before you now the other time you gave me five thousand listen if you really want to be strong and gain power and open the heavens your prayer must be effectual the key to effectual prayer is praying in tongues there is a place for praying in your understanding but i'm telling you if you want to make an effect pray in the spirit for no man knows what is in the heart of a man said the spirit that is in that man so no man knows what is in the heart of god you don't just go around grumbling just praying sing one or two choruses which is good the key to prayer i'm telling you effectual prayer that builds you is praying in tongues spend time praying in tongues not just in english or in your language no there is a place for that pray in the spirit and please if you are here and you have not received the baptism of the holy spirit correctly and seriously i want you to know that there is something you are missing now i know i don't want to go into all the details our time is gone we come from different churches different ministries i know we have different ideas my goal of teaching this tonight is not to create controversy but i love you too much not to tell you the truth if you are not filled with the holy spirit i don't know what you have been taught about it we have teachings already there you can listen to it this is there is a need for you to say lord i need to upgrade it's not just about praying blah, 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 making noise no this is a spiritual language the bible calls it an instrument that helps our infirmities what is our infirmity the bible says we do not know what to pray for as we ought to but the spirit makes intercession are we together don't say i just love the lord i'm, I'm okay I'm, I'm fine honestly i don't want to complicate my spiritual life it's already complicated this world we live is very complicated the ministry of prayer is what will straighten that crooked path he said elijah was a man of like passion like us he said he prayed earnestly that there would be no rain for a space of three and a half years elijah locked the heavens and put the key in his pocket he said the, the heavens will not be open except at my word not the word of any man of god that is serious these are men who took territories they 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 taught the heavens open one time he was up the mountain some enemies came you see that a man of prayer let me tell you if you're a man of prayer and any man goes to any shrine to concoct nonsense oh come on ask the prophets of Baal what happened to them the Bible says they kept calling on Baal for money Elijah said maybe he's sleeping wake him you know why many Christians are weak in the body of Christ we love comfort to a fault and and we men of god are the ones who have destroyed people i believe in prosperity you know that i believe in the blessings of god but brothers and sisters let me tell you there is the sacrifice you must make for your destiny the sacrifice of prayer it's not all about having cities there are giants on every mountain are you hearing what i'm telling you there are giants on every mountain you're a pastor you are not praying you just share a revelation and you are happy you believe you come on stage no prayer no periodic fasting no strength you just want to speak and let things happen do you think god is a herbalist no god is not a herbalist please if you're a pastor here pay attention to what i'm telling you except you want to joke around with your members or you are ready for empty pews the generation we are in now members are not ready to waste their time for nonsense again once they come and sit down and you are wasting their time they will get up and they will leave no matter how you pray pour one gallon of oil on your head we need power it takes prayer to access open heavens are we together we add drama in churches for two hours 
and then when he's about to pray they say everybody bow your head as if we are mourning somebody just recites a prayer request for 10 minutes they say okay thank you jesus for answering prayer and people get up and that's why we keep getting weaker and weaker no discernment spiritual things are flying around your territory nobody has the eyes to see and the ears to hear until it happens and everybody is confused may that be, not be your testimony in the name of jesus christ three enemies of prayer number one excess food excess food there is a name for it it's called gluttony believe me if you take what i'm telling you your prayer life will step into another dimension am i saying you should not eat no not at all excess food gluttony there is a connection between food and the flesh number two excess sleep excess sleep the second enemy of prayer excess sleep number three the third enemy of prayer worry 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 is a spirit that's why the first assignment of worry is to bring you to a point of depression have you seen people with worry I don't mean people who are just thinking real worry they can't even talk uh -uh, are you doing well they just keep quiet because satan's goal is to shut your mouth he knows that there is power that is released if you open your mouth he says my heart is indicting a good matter yeah i speak of excellent things he said my tongue is the pen of a ready writer psalms 45 1 and 2 my tongue is the pen of a ready writer men ought always to pray brothers and sisters pray turn and tell your neighbor pray say pray again say pray again say pray in the night yeah pray in the night you will you will command tremendous power there were times in zaria most of the people here will tell you night time was the time people build strength ah come on you would see all kinds of strategies of prayer strategies but well, god is helping us i'm just i'm just challenging you brothers and sisters please hear me if you are married husband and wife pray a praying husband and wife is a staying husband and wife a lazy husband and wife is a divorced family already it's a matter of time because every spirit the devil will move across families and he will come like the angel of death pass through every city but when he got to Goshen he came he saw that he saw that there was a fortification what fortification have you put around your life John chapter 1 when Satan went before God what happened he met a man who made oblations for his children it was a similitude of prayer and Satan said I came but I could not access him have you not built an hedge around him Satan is a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian beauty and glory of God comes upon your life when you pray don't put prayer as an instrument of crashing this is the problem some of us pray but the entire scope of our prayer is God give me are you not seeing give me and we try to manipulate God and bend his hand that's why he gave you the blessings of praying in the spirit pray in the spirit stretch in the spirit you can put worship songs your earphone or something to create the atmosphere pray in the spirit even if you cannot pray in the night early hours of the morning why not put a little worship song charge your spirit sing one or two songs blast every mountain before you in tongues and walk out in the day and you become a living miracle you are walking with the heavens open and what looks miraculous for others becomes your atmosphere men will sit down and plot evil you will walk on it as if satan does not exist ah, those are the people who will not be affected by the arrows that fly by day not the noisome pestilence there are people who will be affected you are a christian but you will still be affected but there are those who are immune i pity the native doctor that calls my name in any charm it's not just that it, if all that happens is that it does not work and still cheated 
for calling my name that charm and the lady doctor was born to ashes when elijah finished proving his point he said no 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 if we stop here that's not all go and meet those prophets kill every one of them as a testament that you don't try god the devil has mocked some of our lives and we are just watching running for counseling and discussing some of you this night you will lock your door and say i'm offering my phone lord it must change families don't pray they discuss they call people to come and gossip but they never pray we meet people for counseling we go and meet babalao we go and meet all kinds of people but we never pray we pray as a last resort oh god i come to you you too you have seen what we have done we have made all of our efforts whereas we should come before god there was a king in the bible who died because he didn't seek god it was a taboo to seek other things when you have problems we depend on uncles if i talk to my uncle he will do this let me tell you never take action on anything until you have prayed about it especially major decisions in your life no matter how convinced you are pray because there is a way that cement right onto a man but the bible says the end thereof i can't tell you how many things i wanted to do plans i had physically speaking they look fabulous but when i went to the place of prayer there are many things we wanted to do as a ministry i would discuss in our leaders meeting oh we are going to do a and b i will go back to god it is silent i come back they know already the moment i say we'll do a thing and i'm silent about it they know god does do you have the courage to keep quiet if god is silent do you have the courage to stand still if god is not moving if the cloud did not move they did not move if it stood still stand still the true benefit of prayer not this thing people do just for spirituality just to show that i'm a man of prayer people bend and deceive themselves to show they are praying that's not a sign of prayer that's nonsense those are the kinds of things that make god look like an idiot prayer is serious business and it commands victory say i receive grace to pray say it again i receive grace to pray grace to pray take charge of your atmosphere there are giants on every mountain if they didn't spare jesus they will not spare you i guarantee you make no mistakes do not think they will not come for your business or your family or your children you have the testimony of our dear mother do not think they would they would the devil will attack anything that can be attacked if it does not happen it's coming i guarantee you in the name of the lord the bible says after the temptation he left jesus for a season for a season he came through peter jesus detected him he said ah you caught me the next time he came through judas the son of perdition jesus allowed it to be so that scriptures will be fulfilled not because he was not ready to overcome who oh, speaks from the heavens and the earth will hear all oh, speaks from your throne and i'll hear from the earth my altar is calling you oh god my prayer is calling you oh god oh speak from the heavens and i'll hear you from the world oh speak from your throne and i'll hear from the earth for my altar is calling you oh god my secret place is calling you oh god take my place have an altar that calls him do you have a secret place that calls him when there are men who seek your flesh and they are invoking upon altars is there an altar that answers or are you just loitering around hoping that life will work men have died and 
because they did not have altars let me tell you please play no games i'm not scaring you lady don't think you will just get married because you are beautiful take back your priestly robe tonight and go back to the place of prayer there is an effectual fervent prayer there are many brothers you will not just be established because you are a graduate there are giants on every mountain a man can look at you with his saddest spirit and vow that you will not move forward it takes prayer to move mountains by the grace of god this ministry is moving as if the devil does not exist it's not because the devil does not want to destroy this ministry there is a mystery there are there are mysteries like cornerstones that we have found and put around the boundaries of this ministry number three the third key to carrying and releasing the glory and the manifest presence of god is worship the last scripture and then we'll continue next week during the miracle service second chronicles chapter 5 we'll read verse 13 and 14 just two verses very interesting this was the dedication of the temple when solomon had built the temple there was a sacrifice upon the altar and he was about to dedicate the temple hallelujah second chronicles 13 and 14 it came to pass listen as the trumpeters and singers were what as one making one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the lord and when they lifted up their voice with trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the lord saying for he is good for his mercy endured forever that what then the house was filled with the the cloud filled the whole house right the next verse so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud for the glory of the lord had filled the house listen in 2005 i conducted a personal research jewish worship and the mystery of god's presence i was obsessed i wanted to know what the secret was how will a man just step into a place and the atmosphere just changes physically as if he carries a dimension of glory i wanted to find out because i saw this happen in the lives of the jews i saw this happen to people who were associated to the jews like benihim and so on and so forth they would just sing and worship and before you know it the glory will fill the place oh i wish we had time we'll take it from here next week but brothers and sisters worship is a mystery that compels the presence of god to be made manifest worship is a mystery the third key to activating the manifested presence of god here and now in a place worship it's not enough to just be obedient as powerful as prayer is there is a dimension many of us are missing in our spiritual life worship the bible says in psalm 100 it says that we enter his gates with thanksgiving then he says and his courts with praise he said come before him with singing the protocol to meeting him is song singing come before him it has nothing to do with the quality of your voice it has nothing to do with your music proficiency although that's an added advantage however you cannot give an excuse that because i cannot sing i cannot raise songs and incense of worship unto god next week i'm going to be teaching us the protocol of acceptable worship not every kind of worship is acceptable the proof that your worship is acceptable is that his glory responds to it i'll share with us the mystery of cain and abel a type of the man of the spirit and the man of the flesh the bible says both of them they came and they offered sacrifices of worship right and abel gave of his firstlings and his fatlings and cain just gave up the vegetables and all of that and then the bible says how that the sacrifice 
of Abel rose up to the heavens and that of Cain did not rise up and Cain killed Abel when God met Cain he said where is you know where is Abel he said am I my brother's keeper and then he began to challenge him and he said that if he did what was right paraphrasing would his sacrifice not be accepted sacrifice of worship is not just about singing there is a protocol that leads to acceptable worship the first key to acceptable worship is found in Romans chapter 12 from verse 1 I beseech thee brethren by the message of God that ye offer your bodies that's the first key that ye offer your bodies not your songs not your voice not your offering not your oblations not the lifting up of your hands like the morning sacrifice above and beyond that there is a protocol there is a system that must precede your songs he says your body must become a prototype of what you want to offer with your lips and then Hebrews 13 gives us a picture of the fact that worship and praise is sacrificial so the first is there must be death we explain that the second is that it must be a sacrifice it says let us offer unto God the sacrifice of praise which are the calves of our lips he calls your sacrifice the calf of your lips in the similitude of that which was done in ancient times in the temple he says when you worship God it is in the similitude of the killing of bulls and rams he says offer the calves of your lips a sacrifice that is acceptable unto him hallelujah that's why we took our time to worship and as we began to worship God began to respond and touch people the spirit of prophecy came upon us and we began to minister three short things that I've given you tonight that control the manifestation of God's glory you can't argue it they are not they are not they are not opinions they are the spiritual formula for accessing the glory of God number one obedience number two a, a consistent life of effectual prayer hallelujah number three the incense of worship oh let my praise rise before you the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice these are all mysteries the mystery of the lifting up of hands the mystery of repetition as you sing you see a lot of people sing it the Jews used to sing songs one line they would sing it for hours just like you see many people in many religions it's, it's not an enchantment there is something they do the mystery of repetition you see that happen in the songs that the psalmist wrote their response will be for hallelujah thank you praise the lord for he is good and his mercies endure forever or for his mercy shall endure ever faithful ever sure and so he will say a lot of things and then they will keep responding listen they didn't write songs as musicians they wrote songs as spiritual men they didn't have that skill to compose songs it was as it was delivered to them it was delivered in a particular way that if they sang it it will make god respond in a particular way for instance that formula you are good and your mercy endures forever you know i've studied it i found out that every time the nation of israel wanted deliverance that was the song they sang it had to be that line they invoke the goodness and the mercy of god two things that we quote every sunday they are following us and we never see because we don't believe them the goodness of god and the mercy of god it was the goodness of god that passed before moses i will let my goodness a dimension of my glory called my goodness pass and then his mercy he says for it is of the lord's mercy that we are not consumed 
hallelujah we're going to rise and pray just for a few minutes and say lord i want to see your glory in my life i'm tired of just being a christian coming to church i want to begin to walk in the glory of god lift your hands and begin to pray hallelujah lift your hands and pray father i desire to see the glory the manifest presence of god in my life can you pray please go ahead Kanonya, are you praying? Shepra kata bara da bara da bara da bara da bara. I desire to see your glory in my life, Lord. I'm tired of a barren Christian life. I receive that grace, supernatural grace, supernatural grace, supernatural grace. I want to see your glory revealed in my life. Let the eyes of the blind be opened through my hands. Let the cares of the death be unstopped. Let my life represent breakthroughs, signs, wonders, miracles. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Grace for unusual obedience. Lift your voice and pray. Grace. 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 Grace for unusual obedience. Those outside, make sure you are praying. Grace for usual obedience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number two, please I'd like you to pray. If your prayer life is dead on its way to death, don't feel condemned, don't feel embarrassed, but I'd like you to pray. And say lord bring it back alive my prayer life at every level you can move higher lift your voice and pray the father and effectual prayer of the righteous are filled much make sure you are praying Lord, I'm tired of lack of discernment in my life. I'm tired of acting carnally. I'm tired of acting just by my sensory impulses. I pray my way to divine secrets. I pray my way to divine strategies. I pray my way to divine secrets. hallelujah hallelujah let's add one more prayer under the area of prayer you're going to pray many of us see things and hear things but there is no grace access to understanding so there are so many things god is showing us but we are deaf of understanding so we do not have the grace to interpret or to interpret correctly lift your voice and cry say grace to understand he said, understand it, what thou readest. It's one thing to see. It's one thing to have a dream. It's one thing to hear God speak. But it's another thing to understand. The working knowledge of the revelations you have received. You need it for your marriage. You need it for your ministry. You need it for your job. You need it to know where God wants you to be. Part time. understanding understanding lord i'll not just have dreams i receive understanding i'll not just hear your voice i receive interpretations accurate unemotional interpretations of spiritual reality <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah last prayer point lord teach me the art of worship worship in a way that can bring your presence to abide and remain in my life lift your voice give me songs from heaven give me songs in the night melodies of the spirit 
Let me hear the songs of angels. Let me hear the sound of the Spirit. Give me the songs for every season. The song to sing my way into the glory. To sing my way into breakthrough. To sing my way into healings and miracles. To sing my way into prophecy. to sing the songs of the spirit hallelujah hallelujah next week i'll teach you briefly before i begin to minister during the miracle service listen pay attention to the songs that god brings in your life seasonally there are times the spirit is the one who recommends the song you will use in your worship stay there don't be rebellious those songs have authority upon them to bring a dimension of breakthrough in the last maybe three months the lord speaks to me two songs i have i have gotten so many songs are we together now pay attention music is one of the languages in the spirit you must pay attention to the impulses the sounds sometimes it could just be the line of a song you are glorious so glorious in your way that's what lands upon your spirit don't just guess your song and say the song is not in my tribe no there is authority in that song it's like a sword it's an instrument of warfare you keep singing it sometimes for hours are we together now yeah that's how i get see let me tell you i can give you testimonies of personal breakthroughs in my life as a result of certain songs so glorious in your way no other song will do you just keep singing it you get up in the morning and that's the only song you hear my deliverer is coming my deliverer is standing by that may be a song in your spirit you may just receive it god is telling you i'm coming too for you but you see the problem is many of us do not know you are supposed to take it don't stop singing it that's your instrument that's a pass in the spirit but we drop it and then raise all kinds of choruses in our languages and we are just singing and dancing and God is saying no there is acceptable worship are we together? there are times you see us in Koinonia here two weeks, three weeks when I come up stage or the worship team we keep repeating certain songs there is authority upon the songs we stretch them until the grace that they came with from heaven is delivered unto the people then the songs will rest pay attention to songs everyone can receive songs whether you're a musician or not it's a product of alignment not just musical accuracy you can edit it but you can receive a song hold on to it and sing your way to an ending breakthrough it was the playing of the string that casted out demons right from david there was a sound that the spirits heard he said there is as it were many voices and none of them is without effect lord every time people say me let it be that they mean you every time they say it is joshua selman let it be that they truly meant to say you jesus the son of the living god when you're done I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. My desire has never been to be a preacher. My desire has never been to be a celebrity. No. All of these things mean absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. All that I desire with my life is that God can find a space through this vessel and bring glory to the name of his son and I'm telling you if that happens I am completely satisfied this mundane pursuit of so many things that's not it at all 
I sang this song from the depth of my heart. It's not just something you pretend because you're on stage. It's, it's been my passion to see that the mighty things that God would do even tonight, that it will not just be the promoting of the name of a man, as inevitable as that may look, but that behind all of this, my desire is to see Jesus, to see him glorified and his name be lifted. That for me, it's an honor already to be the vessel to be used by God. And let me teach you something. Please listen. If you're a man of God here, please listen. This is a miracle service. Conquer the addictiveness of fame and power. Conquer it. It's a beautiful experience to be on the other side of the applause, on the other side of the commendations. It's a wonderful thing. But if you do not conquer the deception that comes with that lust to be known, to be famous, you will never go far with God. Pray as far as you can pray. Fast as far as you can fast. Read the Bible for as long as you can read. But if that heart condition, that circumcision does not happen, you will never go far with God. I believe with all my heart that this is a word already for someone. You know, most times when people see God um, doing mighty things through men, the celebration that comes with results begins to whet the appetite of their lusts. And they think, oh dear, let me have this opportunity and shine too and prophesy too and pray. No. This song must become a, an anthem and a desire in your life. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, he says, I will draw all men to myself. It is cheaper stepping back and allowing him to take his place. Hallelujah. I will just share a few things very briefly and then we'll pray. We have a lot to do. But the Lord just inspired in my heart to challenge us. And it's important for us to understand that God, I will continue to teach us this, the boundary of God's power is his word. God is limited by the provisions that his word allows. He cannot go outside of the scope of his word in blessing, in lifting, in delivering. Whatever it is that he does has to be consistent with the allowance provided for by his word hallelujah and so it, it matters i know that many of us are here we're trusting god to just step in don't worry just 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 calm down and lend your attention let the holy spirit minister very deeply and challenge you because when the word of god listen carefully please when the word of god is not released there is no basis for the power of god to flow are we together now the bible says in that light is the hiding place of his power the power of god hides behind his light and so when the effulgence of that light comes then his power is ready to be released the first thing i want to share tonight is is a word of caution again to just remind us again number one that every believer's pursuit and goal is to be like Christ and to reflect him to the world please listen our goal is beyond miracles our goal our pursuit is beyond signs wonders 
our pursuit is beyond the knowledge of mysteries and principles as powerful as they are it is important for us to understand fundamentally that our pursuit sincerely in this kingdom is number one to become like Christ experientially apostle was speaking and he said my little children in whom I travail until Christ be formed in you so the formation of Christ in a believer and then the ability to reflect Christ to the world this should be our highest pursuit so miracles signs wonders methodologies and principles deliverance healings all of these things are subsets and must remain so they are only possibilities that are brought into our lives to the end that we find the comfort and the stability to pursue this one goal to be like Christ and to reflect Christ to the world if we veer off from this ultimate goal then miracles will no longer be a blessing listen carefully prosperity will no longer be a blessing breakthrough of any sort will no longer be a blessing the value the value in receiving the miraculous in prospering receiving restoration breakthrough etc the value is in its ability to contribute to keep you at ease so that you can continue this pursuit of becoming like Christ in experience are we together it is very important because it is easy for believers to veer off now because we are humans please you have to listen to this many of us seated here right now and many following from around the world online we were buffeted by all kinds of situations and truly let me tell you um, the human was not designed to find ease in pain so that that focus to get pain away to get everything that looks like tragedy it can overwhelm your desire to pursue Christ you just want the money because you are tired of the embarrassment from landlord you want to know the principles you're tired of being laughed at and so on and so forth you want the miracle you are tired of the pain you are tired of living on drugs you know you want the job you are tired of being limited you want the child you know all of these things they are very legitimate desires but I'm saying the real value of the manifestation of the power of God is the revelation of Jesus Christ through it you have to understand this so all that we do here all that we teach all that we do is an attempt to coordinate our lives and our destinies together by the spirit to the end that when all is said and done more than the knowledge of principles more than the knowledge of formulas and methodologies more than physical results of breakthrough prosperity increase speed and all of these possibilities in the kingdom more than all of this our greatest pride in fact even more than purpose an assignment as it were that we become like Christ in experience and then out of the abundance the richness of him that has been formed in us we can reflect that to the world whoever does that is a winner a real winner hallelujah ministries that work in very strong dimensions of the anointing the prophetic healing signs and wonders usually will need to remind themselves every once and again because the charismatism around the move of God and the manifestation of God's power alone can tilt you away from this understanding. Are we together? In a few minutes now, God is going to be touching, lifting, blessing people and all kinds of testimonies will be coming. And sometimes we have believers who tabernacle within organizations and spiritual platforms like this for many years. They never know God. 
they never have a personal encounter with God. Their lives do not become reflections of his possibilities with time. Although they get miracles, although they receive impartations, although the gifts of the Spirit continue to work in their lives. Are we together? Although they will buy cars and houses and build estates, although the ministries will move from permanent site to permanent site and increase and expand and become successful in as much as we know success to be but if all of these things happen and they do not point us back to the lord and help us to know him not to know what he can do to know who he is then there is a serious problem is God blessing us today? There are people who will never opt to be born again. They are uninterested in anything that has to do with salvation. They are not interested in God, but they are interested in every other thing aside from salvation. They want the healing power that comes with the kingdom. They want the fame, the increase, the speed. They want the revelation, everything that can come, they desire. But that encounter with the son of the living God is something that... Um, even ministers are uninterested, really. They just want the charismatism. And the reason is, there is an explanation. Because we are humans, we walk with our senses. And the things that we see and experience is what we can relate with. Are we together? And whoever is the face behind that will have all kinds of benefits. Financial benefits, benefits of fame and influence and loyalty etc so it is it is more rewarding physically to ignore the pursuit of the knowledge of christ and pursue the manifestation of power and miracles if someone throws his crutches with blind eyes is open if a deaf ear opens i mean that news will spread far if you say someone was saved they say well glory to god as usual but what really happened what people mean i mean what is the wow factor in the meeting we must be spiritual enough to value the power of becoming like christ we must be spiritual enough to see the all surpassing superiority that that pursuit provides above and beyond getting things it is god's desire that our lives become a reflection of christ knowing god and having a personal walk with god is our highest priority write it down please knowing god and having a personal walk with god is the believer's highest pursuit our highest priority is not to end the family crisis please listen if you are not listening to me it's a sign that the devil is distracting you because what i'm saying is very important you will receive the miracles you will receive the signs the wonders the miracles the breakthrough this is for sure but knowing god and having a personal walk with God is our highest priority. Our highest priority. So while I receive the miracle, the job, the breakthrough, the blind eyes opening, the deaf ears opening, speed coming into my life, restoration happening, decades of barrenness vanishing overnight, infirmities and diseases living just like that more than those things please listen to me the real value is that they now take away the hindrances that can distract my pursuit of knowing god are we together why do we hate poverty not because poverty um we hate the role it plays in limiting your knowing God and becoming like him. Why? Because it takes time to know God. It takes time to understand his ways. And that same time it takes to know God is what the world demands of you to be able to give you financial stipends. So there is a conflict. 
you have your time it can be used to know god or it can be used to pursue wealth all through your lifetime this is why we hate poverty and then because every time you are serving the lord caesar will come i've taught you this and demand tribute when you focus to worship god caesar will come and if the way to be a peacemaker in the earth is a formula give to caesar what belongs to caesar and give to god while you worship god keep caesar's coin because he's coming when he comes give him his coin and caesar will go and you keep worshiping god but the moment you cannot give caesar's tribute you will have to forego your worshiping god to labor to find his coin and give to him caesar distracted jesus and distracted his service jesus said okay peter you have to go fishing you were supposed to be listening to me but now that caesar has come because it's a law we have to break this transmission of worship and sometimes it's not ours it's your lifetime are you getting it now so by the time i prophesy financial favor or i teach you on the principles of finance it's not just for money's sake it is to be able to keep caesar's gold and when caesar knocks the door you say carry it please i'm focusing on god and destiny your tribute is there for you the disturbance of caesar is a terrible strategy to take you away from god caesar will come as your child's school fees it will come as all kinds of wicked bills growing geometrically so to be a peacemaker is to sustain the intelligence and the ability to give to caesar what belongs to caesar and then give to god what belongs to god why do we expose people to the power of god to lift what is there about lifting because you cannot make impact when you are in the pit when joseph was in the well he remained there we don't know what he was doing down there but one thing we know is that he was not making any impact he was alone when he was brought out and honored in the palace when he was there he was able to salvage his brothers why do we have to prophesy speed are we together the reason is because out the unit of destiny is time please listen very carefully whatever eats your time has eaten a portion of your life many of us got born again late already you dedicated a major chunk of your life to ignorance and to the service of the devil and now that you are born again there is still the law of process and if you are to follow the law of process in its normal course you will never have the time to know god and serve so god will have to introduce i call them systems of advantage he will bring them into the equation of your destiny to restore time so that in one year god can put 10 years inside one year and then now he can allow you to make progress are we together a woman who has been barren for 10 years already she, she would have had maybe three children at least well spaced and happy even if she has one child she's making progress but restoration has not yet happened to her but when god gives that woman triplets he didn't give her children he took time and brought it back nine months and an experience that was to span nine years he brought it in nine months are we together so i want you to see every miracle and everything that happens to you with respect to its contribution or its inhibition to your knowing god and pursuing him if you remain poor like many people have chosen to the challenge there is that they will not know God and they will stop others from knowing God. If you remain weak and you are not strong, the challenge is one day your body will not be able to host the spirit again and it will leave. Because there is a requisite health condition for the spirit to be able to stay in this body. Your body is your passport to function in this realm. Not your passport to be alive. 
you don't need the body to be alive but you need the body to be authorized to function in this dimension of God's kingdom this is the reason why we agree with people that demonic sicknesses like cancer like HIV and all these sicknesses that don't have names but have symptoms and the pain that they bring when we agree for people to be touched it's not just showing that the man of God is anointed is a way of saying God is interested in your longevity God is interested in you serving him because those things are death sentences hallelujah are we together so I want you to see everything that you will receive tonight with respect to its contribution when you see someone getting healed or getting delivered don't look at the rowdiness of the process. Rejoice with that person because something is happening to that person that will grant him or her the ease to serve God now. Are we together now? Our messages must be central and eventually. Remember the formula in, in the days of Moses. There were serpents, but there was a brazen serpent that was lifted. And that the condition was that if you set your gaze on that one, you will survive this one. In any case, you must look at the serpent. You can choose to look at the one that is on the ground there or look at the one lifted. Are we together now? And that anyone who stayed there, ignoring all of these things and stayed there, that person was saved. Healing is pointless if it does not lead to Christ. Deliverance is pointless if it does not lead to Christ. Prosperity, a job, increase, all kinds of miracles, they are pointless if they do not lead to Christ. So it's important for every one of us to get this. Number two, the second thing I would say tonight is the fallacy listen carefully we must conquer the fallacy of trying to do what we have not become the futility of attempting to live out a lifestyle that has not been captured in our paradigm and our mindsets listen very carefully it is futile to attempt to do things any lifestyle that your mindset cannot host is not yours this is very powerful listen to my teaching the mystery of deliverance I call it deliverance through transformation many believers listen to me very carefully now there are people who do not believe that the idea and the concept of deliverance even exists it does it truly does the only balance is that casting out a spirit or an influence as i always teach is not the end of it now please we need africa we need to hear this because um we many people do not want to go through the labor that brings transformation so that our experiences now reflect what the word of god says i can cast out a spirit out of a man the influences can leave you. Spirits not only stay in men. A spirit can stay in a business. A spirit can stay in your... It doesn't have to be in and around the faculties of man. Mm -mm. Man is their most preferred habitation, but not the only habitation. Spirits can stay in a business. They can stay anywhere. Anything that can have a material expression can be home to spirits. They can stay in a challenge. A challenge can be a body and a spirit stays there. Are we together now? Now, but praying and setting you free from the influence of that spirit is only part one of your true freedom. The other part is that you must be transformed. Please say transformed. When Jesus was given what we would know to be his manifesto the messianic prophecy isaiah 61 and then luke chapter 4 he said the spirit of the lord is upon me because he hath anointed me 
to preach glad tidings. Listen carefully. To the meek, he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Are we together? And then he said to set the captives free. He had sent me to proclaim, one of the versions who say, proclaim deliverance. There is a dimension of deliverance that is not conducted. It is through the accurate dispensing of the word of God. That means that your understanding must become fruitful to that dimension. Then your lifestyle follows suit. Are we together now? It is futile to try to do things. Any experience you want to live out that has not been captured as a reality in your thinking believers a major part of our growth is in the realm of the mind you have to know this it's unfortunate that many people criticize any effort to transform the mind to meticulously mentor believers into understanding usually they think it is weakness a major part of the ministry of jesus was dedicated in mentorship in fact he did not finish the curriculum when he resurrected he called all of them to the lecture and for 40 days he needed to tidy up some things before he would leave their growth happened principally through his the mentorship of the word he started in matthew chapter 5 the beatitudes teaching them the ways of the kingdom this is how we function in this kingdom when they embraced it then they now made room to be empowered by the spirit that means the ministry of the Holy Spirit will look almost useless in the life of a believer who does not contend for transformation. There is a dimension of his spirit that brings us to that transformation. But the richer part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is seen when we are transformed, not before we are transformed. The primary role of the Holy Spirit before our transformation is to guide us into the body of truth allocated to construct our understanding so that we reign. That's his primary assignment. And then to convict and so on and so forth. The richness of his ministry, the potentials of a man's receiving the Holy Spirit is experienced first by him and then by his territory only when he's transformed. That means if we are not transformed, we will shortchange the potentials of the life and the ministry of the Holy Spirit as can be seen in us. Most people think when the Holy Spirit comes, he just continues to transform you and then that's... No, 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 no. Transformation has an end. Are we together now? That means you should be able to attain onto a level of commendable maturity where the Holy Spirit says now we can do business together you have risen to a realm where I can freely manipulate your faculties to the degree to which they will allow me to express myself richly transformation is powerful many believers will not contend for transformation and there is a consequence if you do not contend for transformation the, the, the consequence is that you will return back to the circle of exorcism, casting out devils, temporary liberty, casting out devils, temporary liberty, casting out devils, temporary liberty. Remember that the spirits don't need to only come. See, listen, let me tell you. Come, um, Dr. Mecca, look at this. This gentleman... Can, I can speak over his life prophetically. Watch this. And within the space of two, three days, even one day, this man can receive a million naira, two million naira. Now, he has not prospered. That blessing is to help him to be able to solve the needs that press him so that he can learn the ways that prosper men. Because the devil is not afraid of the money he's held. The money is not in his mind. So he, he is not his own. It was a loan that was given to him prophetically. It becomes his when the money is in his mind. So he can hold on to that and say, Ah, apostle is powerful. And after two months, the, the futility of his understanding will abort that miracle. Are we together now? Because he does not know the ways of God allocated for the increase and the sustenance 
of resources inevitably no matter how careful he used that he uses that money it must finish and must leave him it's not an attack is the law i've taught you because his growth does not allow this kind of result prophecy routed a way of bringing it to help him fast but because transformation was not there it must leave him now when it leaves him he will come back again and say apostle i brought ten thousand like that day and i will still speak I'll say now in the name of Jesus, may God bless you. This time around, it doesn't matter how much comes. It's still the same thing. Whether it's 100,000 or 10 million, he's still in trouble. He's not free. Are we together now? So it is true that the spirit of poverty can be around this man's business, this man's life, and so on and so forth. I'm just using this as an example. Now, after I take authority over that spirit, the Bible says when a spirit leaves a man, it goes through dry regions looking for a safe place a place of habitation not finding any the spirit will advise itself i will arise like the prodigal son and return back to my house he's still calling the man that means you remain just because a spirit leaves you or leaves your business does not mean you are free it finds the house swept clean but empty and then the Bible says it gathers seven others. Jesus is teaching here now. That means this is how the realm of the spirit works. And returns back to that man. So that the latter state of that man is even worse than the former. And because of his ignorance, he will say the man of God is fake. The man of God is not fake. You are not transformed to sustain the miracle. Are you getting where the ignorance of believers come from? At least you were in a, you, you, you had a house. After the breakthrough, now you don't even have a house again. And you say, ah, I don't know what kind of a reverse anointing works in this church or in this ministry or somewhere. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. But now imagine with me that God steps in over Dr. Emeka's life. Are we together? And then the Lord blesses him, still using the finance that, that, that I'm giving an illustration around. And this guy now, God blesses him. And he decides to say, now that at least one million has come, my destiny is bigger than one million. But one million can quickly help me pay maybe my rent. Are we together? And just sort out my children now. I can, even if I can't pay everything, I can pay first them. I can rest. While he's doing that, he now subjects himself and says, do you know what? I want to find out God's ways. The ways are located for the prosperity of the saints. And he begins to gather these teachings. While he's listening, do you know what he's doing? He's closing the door. This guy is prospering, not when he's doing business, when he is fortifying his mindset. So that the possibility for that spirit to come in does not exist again. To preach deliverance to the captives many believers continue to hop from prayer house to prayer house now I'm, I'm not being sarcastic i would not do that from church to church from apostle to apostle prophet to prophet pastor to pastor in need of what only transformation can sustainably bring are we together now yes we will prefer to do all kinds and all manner of prayer than to settle down and say something is wrong. Notice, no matter what job this guy gets by prophecy, he loses it through ignorance. Prophecy brings it. Ignorance. When the devil marks that you have this stronghold, he will no longer fight the prayer that is coming. This is how Satan mocks many men of God across Africa. Before they pray, the demon leaves joyfully because he knows he will come back. He studies the mindset and finds out that it has become a stronghold. The door has been opened and has been hinged to something to keep that door open. And the spirit says, I can stroll around. The service will soon finish. And I will route through just one door of ignorance. And I'm back to the life, back to the business. Are we together? Very, very powerful. So this gentleman, as he's transformed, something is happening to him. You will find out prophecy now you will see the potential of the prophecy or the prayer or the deliverance as you would call it it will show in his transformation 
so he can return and say 10 years ago watch this once upon a time i was poor or i was weak or i was under all kinds of yokes and all of that then a day came when that spirit or that influence over my life was addressed by the power of god comma and then i subjected myself to a season to learn the ways of god and the holy ghost the more i expanded my spiritual capacity the more his potential the richness of his anointing and his presence manifested through me now look at my life i'm a testimony from here to here i never want this place to just become a place of miracles ah there's a service so let's go you'll be healed you'll be blessed i agree but I, I disagree that you'll be sustainably blessed, sustainably healed, sustainably lifted, except that in addition to the prayer and that which you will receive tonight, you must contend for knowledge. This kingdom is knowledge-based and not any kind of knowledge. You are not at liberty to choose what you want to hear. No, there is a body of truth already allocated. You are not given the luxury of inventing what you want. It may not be comfortable to your, your status quo or whatever church or whatever teaches you. Listen, you must submit yourself to the whole counsel of God, not the one that looks pleasant to you, doctrinally speaking. If you want to stand balanced and to receive the victory, to walk in the fullness of the victorious life, then you must submit yourself to the body of truth allocated to bring you results imagine with me for instance that this were a student and then a lecturer is teaching and he says i don't like this course maybe a medical you're a doctor so imagine a very difficult medical course and then he's saying i don't like this one i like this one now you already know that this guy is in trouble there is a reason why he's taught that as uncomfortable as this you have to love your future as a doctor more than the pain to settle down and say I, I may not like it it doesn't i mean who would want to touch a cadaver who would want to walk with a dead body who would want to keep giving people injections all around i mean these guys just inject people and do all kinds of things who would want to do that but you have to do it that's the only way the uh what the, what's inside that the um drug will get into your body there's no Bluetooth for it. It has to go directly. <laughs> Are we together? So, this guy may look cruel while he's giving you that injection. You have to choose health or to just have a temporal comfort. And you endure the thing and receive it for a few days. And after that, you are fine. This is it. It's amazing that the believers that choose what to believe... That means that, um, by, let me explain what I mean. The believers that sit down and select what to believe according to the comfort it provides are the people who don't have results. Isn't it funny? That believers who do not have results are the ones who sit down and choose and say, no, 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 no. Um, I don't like this. I like this. I don't like this. It's pride. The Bible says when you are ready to receive, there is a quality that is required. It's called meekness. That you receive with meekness the engrafted word. You must embrace the whole counsel of God to experience all of God. Are we learning? What I'm sharing with you is very powerful. This is what will give value to the prayers that we'll have. You know, Africa, we like prayer. And prayer is good. But visionless prayer that is not seen as one of the keys that connects to other keys will only continue to be a dissipation of energy flattery in religion and will never produce results the value of prayer is in the role that it plays while other kingdom principles are kept Prayer does not just work generically, regardless of your obeying other principles. It's why we continue to dissipate spiritual energy and convince ourselves that based on the pain that comes in prayer, God must be answering. Spiritual things are interconnected and the entire system must be healthy for you to experience all of God. 
if you choose a dimension and leave the rest so we have people who are always praying always delivering something always casting out demons now please i i, I don't say it with with a with a heart of sarcasm at all don't don't find offense in any way this way you will never become a portrait of the victory of christ it will never truly happen it was never supposed to be an endless pursuit forever what then is the excellency of the finished work of christ then on the other hand we have those who continue to flatter themselves that just by default they are free oh boy and their lives continue to show that this is not correct when they are sick they don't say christ paid for my sickness they go to the pharmacy and then they believe that every other thing is all right the possibility of sickness the possibility of defeat no matter how temporal is already a clue that victory is established in christ from the prophetic standpoint but it takes your engaging with god to make it manifest and people stop here and continue to flatter themselves that they are free until they head to the grave are we together I shall not die you are deteriorating no no god forbid i know that i'm fine you are going down you are having all kinds of dreams and nightmares you finish praying immediately and lie down the spirit say he's asleep now let's continue and you get up and say i didn't see anything you are joking there until they kill you in the spirit and you wake up and die physically back again there is something called the death of a fool it is the death that comes as a result of assumption and pride and ignorance we must embrace the whole counsel of christ if you did not prosper by default then you will not stay healthy by default you will not stay delivered by default it has to be engaged through growth they are stabilizers they provide the dimensions of your stability if you're with me say amen, amen. this is the second thing we must learn because I, I, I continue to get tired of believers again and again. It is this, if this kind of teaching does not come, the danger is that you, the man of God, who is always doing the deliverance, you are in trouble. Number one, you will be idolized. And that is not healthy for you. Are we together? Number two, you will be weary. Because even if you delegate someone and say, pray for them, they'll say, I've gone. You do your own prayer again. And you will continue. These people will wear you out. You must know the truth and know it enough to set you free are we blessed I wrote something down here our spiritual efficiency as far as living in victory and advancing the cause of the kingdom is concerned will require specific knowledge of the ways the principles the methodologies of the kingdom praise the Lord I think there was a time a gentleman sent me a very funny text. I know that he was just, a, I don't know if he was a, a, a male, female, or he just sent me a text and said, Apostle, God has called you to be an apostle to preach Christ crucified, not principles and not systems and strategies. I started interceding for the guy because his, his life will be a compendium of pain. I guarantee you. You see, time is a revealer. And it's terrible to carry so many people in your ignorance only to find out after many decades that you are in trouble. There is a dimension of Jesus called Jesus the way. Jesus the way. Jesus did not just say, I am life. He said, I am the way. A methodology. It is still Jesus. This man who was proposing that believed that for whatever reason that the teaching of the principles of the kingdom would veer people away from Christ if it's not taught with balance if it's taught as an end to itself and not a means to an end I didn't even reply I just felt I love the person who knows maybe the person is following today I just hope that the person has grown because this kind of copycat pride 
is what is responsible for the eventual pain of many people where a man of God will stand and not know what to believe again your ignorance has been represented in every dimension and now you stand and wonder what do I do you must be men and women of conviction based on the truth of God's word listen if you do not know the ways of God the primary way that we know God is through scripture the second way we know God is through the names of God the third way we know God is through the person of Jesus Jesus the Bible calls him the 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 express image of the invisible God and the last way we know God is through experience there are not many other ways these are the ways allocated and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture that is able to make you wise unto salvation it takes wisdom to see the potentials of salvation in your life it says that you draw with joy out of the wells of salvation when you know god and encounter him he will expose you to his ways it is the knowledge of his ways that brings beauty and glory to your christian life are we together two scriptures and then we'll pray thank you Megan. exodus chapter 6 to our business for the night now exodus chapter 6 from verse 6 to 7 blessed be the name of the lord Amen. wherefore say unto the children of israel i am the lord and i will bring you out from under the burdens of the egyptians i will read you out of their bondage and i will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments seven and i will take you to me for a people and i will be to you a god and ye shall know that i am the lord your god how do you know by the mighty acts there is an experience that i will give you that will cause you and validate to you again that i am the lord your god which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians Psalm 34 and verse 19 please look up it is not the best of God that believers are challenged however it is also not unusual in the economy of God that believers are challenged listen very carefully it while it is true that it is not a the best reflection of the Zoe life if and when believers are challenged in any aspect of their life it is the flawlessness the dexterity the ease of their lives show the multifaceted dimensions of god however because the treasure is in earthen vessels it is also not unusual please listen carefully and deliver yourself from the ignorance that people continue to propose that make believers feel guilty for being challenged God in his dealings with men knew that there will always be room here and there are we together for the devil to seem to find a place and negate the reality of the victory of Christ and so God allocated all kinds of systems so that if for any reason as a believer you find yourself in a predicament that is not consistent with what the Bible says should befit you when you are a partaker of eternal life, you don't feel bad. You can now begin to engage the systems allocated. Here's what the Bible says. Many are the afflictions, not of a man. Many are the afflictions of the righteous not a righteous the righteous many are the afflictions of the righteous not the affliction of sinners there is something called the affliction of the righteous now it doesn't really matter how it came the most important thing is that it is there and that there is a provision next um, it says but the Lord this is your advantage 
Many are the afflictions of an unbeliever. But he will remain there because he does not have the Lord as his anchor. But many are the afflictions of the righteous. The advantage of the righteous in affliction is that he has the Lord who can deliver him out of them all. Out of them all. So, the embarrassment is not the challenge. Listen, believers, stop allowing challenges to make you feel, I'm not a Christian. Maybe it's because I did not pray. No, no, not at all. Not at all. The Bible tells us that many are the afflictions. So, it is not unusual when your prayer request is almost a notebook. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. It says, but the Lord delivered him. So God is a deliverer. He delivers. He delivers him. What is deliverance? I've taught you. Deliverance doesn't just have to do with spirits. No. It's the parting away. Separation between you and the obstacles that impede your progress. It's called deliverance. The moment a platform is created where there is a separation between you and the influences that impede your progress. Be demonic be it mental, be it physical, in whatever variation and fashion it comes. The Lord delivered him out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. So it is possible that a pastor can have his children go haywire. And while that is happening, rent issues, financial issues, while that is happening, maybe his spiritual life is going down, while that is happening and he sits and feels bad and some ignorant believer comes and says, oh dear, it's just because you don't know God your life. No, no, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. But when you remain there, then you agree with that situation that the victory of Christ is a lie. That means when you find yourself in that situation, the revelation of the fact that the Lord can bring you out should not allow you to sit there comfort, um, comfortable. Are we together? Don't find comfort in that situation. You get up and begin to press. The woman with the issue of blood knew. She understood that she was a daughter of Abraham. The one who was took, uh, you know, bound, she did not know. But this one knew. So, she could not heal herself, but she was already rehearsing. Oh, Jesus should come around this place. As soon as Jesus came, she knew already. She pressed and touched the helm of his garment. Never become comfortable when your life is yet to reflect the full potentials of that which comes with the life of God, the victorious life. Your assignment as a believer is to continue to scan through every area of your life to give thanks over the areas that are now reflecting in experience and in reality the victory of Christ but then to write down and begin to deal decisively with the areas that are yet to conform to the, the reality of the victory of Christ I love Naaman the Bible says Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army. He says he was a very valiant man. So in one aspect of his life, he was doing exceptionally well. Then the Bible says, but he was leprous. And I'm sure Naaman just said, oh, at least I'm a captain. It's all right. I can live my life like that. But a little slave girl came to plant dissatisfaction. She said, oh, that my Lord would listen to me paraphrasing there is a prophet that you can go to in israel and you go to that prophet and this other side of your life will also come and you know come under alignment and he dragged himself there long story short at the end of it the bible says he became his body became as fresh as that of a child don't be ashamed of your challenges and your pain but don't be comfortable with them either you should be doing something, praying about it, reading about it. There's, there has, if you are at ease when things are not going well, it's a sign that you are not a serious believer. It is true that you don't have the power as it were to, to minister healing to yourself, but you should sit down and say, look, where do you know that God is moving? 
where do you know this situation i may not have the power to change it but i know that this is not how a home should look like we are up today down tomorrow i have read in the bible that there is favor but i must sincerely admit that i've not seen it reflect in experience i will continue to confess favor i will never speak negatively but then i will partner with god in pursuit of the graces the places the dimensions that will make this become my experience that's how we walk in victory now thanks be to god which causes us always to triumph are we together and so this this gentleman now he knows that this is what the bible has said about his life that you shall be the head and not the tail he's born again he's believed it but he's becoming the tail almost forever and then he goes to read there has to be something wrong he doesn't know what is wrong but his dissatisfaction is attracting the spirit of wisdom you see that now he does not know what to do but one thing he knows is that his life is not yet a reflection of the word of god listen my brothers and my sisters the excellency of your knowing god is tested when you insist that your life becomes a reflection that insistence is what the bible calls faith it is not the wishing your insistence to see to it i know i don't have a child now no problem i will not kill myself many are the afflictions so there's no embarrassment you can say whatever you want to say ah call me a barren well men are not barren, no. barren woman are we together impotent man whatever you want to call no problem however i've read in my bible that he can make the barren to become a joyful mother so i will not just conclude and say well god one day no 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 in your quietness you say lord just because i said thank you for my condition does not mean i will keep quiet i'm thanking you because the bible says listen the bible says in everything gives thanks is a law it has nothing to do with results i give thanks out of obedience but i insist out of faith Please sit down and learn what will give value to a miracle service tonight so that you will walk out of this place enlightened these pockets of gaps and imbalance is why believers continue to mock themselves you insist and your insistence is luring the spirit of wisdom did the bible not say through desire proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1 through desire a man having separated himself he says that he seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom as your desire begins to grow there has to be a way we can't be begging in this family my father is a pastor we are still begging my mother is an intercessor we are still begging my brother is a banker he's looking like a, like a, a farmer he's looking like somebody who 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 just packs death on the road there has to be a way out i don't know the way but i know there is a way you see it now ah. oh, 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 oh. my lifting has come assignment listen your assignment as a believer is to keep looking at your life and looking at scripture and record what is not matching let that become your project no mat listen 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 in as much as you don't feel bad for where you are you also don't feel good for where you are you have to find a way of growing yourself into the dimension of you that becomes the full expression 
of the life and the power of God. So a believer who is at ease is a foolish believer because there is a lot of conformity to be done. You may be good in your prayer life, but your finances is, is rubbishing the other part of your, your Christian life. So you must stay and say, thank you Lord for the one I've seen, but show me the one I've not seen. That's why the Bible says meekness. Because you see, let me tell you this. When you have results in one area of your life, usually you would deceive yourself into believing that one result covers for everywhere. No, you have to approach every aspect of the kingdom life uniquely. That you are a prayer warrior doesn't mean you are prosperous. That you are prosperous does not mean you have character. You have to approach these dimensions per dimension. Until every one of it, and let me tell you this. The more you conform and receive results, the more Christ can be seen through you. People look at your life and they can see the completeness. They know that this is how a believer should look like. If you see me limping, I'm a human being. Human beings can limp. There is nothing to be ashamed of. The best. Are we together now? If you see me hungry and I'm not fasting, glory be to God, I'm still alive. But that's not God's best for me. Because if I'm hungry continually, I will die. Are we together? Hunger can kill. It doesn't kill in one day. But eventually. Poverty will not destroy you in one day. But you continue. The day your children can no longer go to school. You will be surprised at what you will do for money. It's true that you can say, look, we don't need a crowd. Even if it's five people, the most important thing is we are doing well. Excellent. After 10 years of five people, you will see whether you will remain in ministry or not. It is in the multitude of men that is a king's honor. Are we together? So tonight, listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. Tonight is a prayer of addition. Lord, thank you for this, but this area of my life, Lord, you've not visited it yet. And I'm, I'm, I give thanks. But I came for this miracle service. Thanking you for the one you did March, April. But also admitting that my life is not yet in experience. A reflection of all that should be. Is someone ready to pray? Lift your voice in one minute and cry to the God of heaven. It is not unusual for believers to be afflicted but to remain at ease in the presence of affliction is a sign of insensitivity and a sign that you do not know the counsel of God let God be true let God be true and every man a liar let God be true and every condition a liar Please pray. Shakros Kebaratushia. We are still praying. Let God be true. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now listen. Listen. Please hear me. In fact, I will, I will, media, if you can do a podcast of this charge uh, and put it separately, I think people will be blessed hearing it. This thing you just had is real deliverance for someone because it's explaining to you why the devil is not afraid of you no fortification that comes through knowledge hear me please tonight is not a night to be ashamed Lord, I thank you for this, but mention the areas that are not yet there and be sincere. Listen, let me tell you, listen, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. The Bible says, as I hear you declare before my ears, not as you wish, there is nothing to be ashamed of. Are we together now? When you come before God, this is like a threshing floor. When you go to an injection room with the doctor, if they say, turn and receive injection you don't say ah doctor no 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 no, no. That's, that's not his business the doctor is free you are the one who is in trouble are you getting what I'm saying now yes listen to me if there is any aspect of your life 
that is not yet reflecting the reality of the Christ life. Don't feel bad. Don't let it tear down what God has done. Give thanks for the one he has done. But release your faith and say, Lord, I know there is more. And I'm here tonight as a token of my insistence that my life must become a perfect reflection of all the possibilities that are resident in the Christ. Someone pray. Please lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Psalm 34 and verse 17. Psalm 34 and verse 17. God will only arise to separate you from the hindrances that impede your progress in life when you call. The righteous, the same righteous, many are the afflictions of the righteous. And the Lord delivers that righteous, but it does not come by default. That same righteous, the righteous must have to cry and say, Lord, I know that many are my afflictions. I give you thanks in pain, but bring me out of pain. Bring me out of pain. Lift your voice and cry. Please lift your voice and pray. Pray like a priest. Pray like one who is tired of this dimension. Separate me tonight, oh God. Separate me from the influences that impede my progress, that impede the fullness of my destiny in Christ. Chapter 21, verse 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray. Genesis chapter 21, from verse 1 and 2. And the Lord visited Sarah as he said. There was a day he said it but did not do it. There was a day the prophecy was still in motion. Now the time came when what God said. He now did. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Verse 2. And Sarah conceived. This is the proof that God visited her. Something happened in her life that did not happen before. Something happened in her destiny. There has to be proof of something today that was not there yesterday. Lord, visit me tonight. Lift your voice and cry for a visitation. 
Visit my church. Visit my ministry. Visit my finances. Visit my spiritual life. Is someone praying? And the Lord visited Sarah. And the Lord did unto Sarah. And the Lord visited Joshua Selman. And the Lord did unto Joshua Selman. One more prayer point and I'll begin to minister. Please listen. One more prayer point. Listen carefully. He said, tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they may go and serve me. They are not just going out for nothing. Tell Pharaoh, my people need to serve me. But this slavery is a distraction. Tell poverty, my people need to go. But if you don't let, they cannot serve me. Tell failure, tell delay, tell defeat. Tell Tell a slow place of growth. Tell barrenness. There is a prophet who should have been born. You are stopping the generation from experiencing a prophet. Hallelujah. Now let me give you the last prayer point. Hallelujah. Listen. Anything that will give you the comfort to allow you to reveal Christ and focus on the agenda of God is God's business. The moment you bring his kingdom in the picture, hey. let me tell you, whether you invite it on him or not, it is his business. The key to getting God's attention is to bring Christ into the picture. The moment Christ and the purposes of God is in the picture, God's attention is drawn. What is going on here? When David came to threaten the nation of Israel, it was not a threat. It was, it was not just a threat to a king. It was a threat to a covenant and the continuity of God's program. And he raised David. And David said, Goliath, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? When Haman was plotting to destroy the nation of Israel, God said to kill my people so the Messiah will not come. This is my business now. Let me tell you the truth. Your challenges will remain your business oh, until you bring Christ into the picture. Until you bring the agenda of God. Lord, give me peace so I can serve you. Give me speed so I can serve you. Increase so I can focus. Pray 
unto the God that doeth wonder. Lift me, O oh God, so the nations can see your name and your praise. Let the oil come upon my life. Let the anointing come on my destiny. Mention the area that must reflect Christ in your life. Thank you for this area. But Lord, I arise for this one. I place a demand by faith. I insist by faith. listen please listen to me I want you to be very sensitive the spirit of faith is strong in this place please listen we'll be very fast tonight the real revelation is what you have received now the prayer the miracles and this is something that just comes in one sweep this is the sustaining factor you will marvel and wonder what begins to happen to your life because these are the things that are bought prophecy if you don't put them in place you are wasting your time it doesn't matter what comes please hear me whether you are outside following online please I want you to listen there is a God that doeth wonders and God can arise you see the thing with God is it is the process that takes time when the word comes, the word is quick, quick, quick. You came with all kinds of prayer requests and you think God will answer them moving one by one. Just one pronunciation and that's the end of it. It's gone. So we're going to be very, very fast. I, I sensed, please listen very carefully. I'm going to pray for people, but I sensed that one of the, the major things that the Lord wants to do tonight is first the healing you see every time you see death death and infirmity go together are we together now so the healing that that healing grace we're trusting God that people who have come with all kinds of devilish oppressions but they must be free and then number two I will continue to pray this until I see it in your life. I truly believe, listen to me, that there is a dimension of favor that the church, not just individuals, must shift into. Otherwise, forget about the ease to serve the purposes of God. This issue of God today, money tomorrow, God today, argument, finance, is, is, a, is, a, is a demonic thing. You must press for these graces as we pray. Hallelujah. Father, we have come again. You are the God that doeth wonders. The mighty God of heaven, we honor you and we bless you. Thank you for deliverances. Thank you for healings. Thank you for prophecies. Thank you for the manifestation of your power. Lord, let tonight be a remarkable night. Shift people, shift people, shift people. Take away obstacles and hindrances from their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, we're going, please listen, we're going to be very fast. I already see several manifestations of the angelic in this place now. Um, for those of you who are coming here for the first time, listen, take away anxiety, just relax. There is a God who is mighty. He will so shift your life in a way that will surprise you. Are we together now? Praise the Lord. 
thank you bring the lady under the anointing here the power of god is coming on one lady here we have to be very fast now just here i'm seeing a strong anointing of the holy ghost to pray now Jesus the Lord is showing me I'm in a vision now and I'm seeing chains people's feet with chains and the Lord is saying this is what has impeded people from making progress you are moving but you are not making progress I'm about to pray for you now please whether you are an usher or not just help the usher so that we are very fast tonight I'm seeing chains I want to pray now in the name that is above all names, I declare by the Spirit, Lord, that anyone here under the sound of my voice, in any of the overflows, inside and outside, bound by darkness, I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, right now, be free. I cause those chains. I cause those chains. Please bring them out. I decree and declare. Overflow one. I'm seeing such a mighty deliverance. Overflow one. Just overflow one. I'm seeing the power of God come. We have to be very fast. But I'm praying now. You're going to shout that name that is above all names. Listen. This deliverance is not just for you alone. Some of you came and left your family members for years. You are still in the same spot. You love God, but there is no progress. I want to pray for you now. At the count of three, there's such a strong anointing. In the name of Jesus, as you shout that name, that name that is above all names, I tell you, if God be God, then any chain holding you and holding your family must give way. Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be deliverance right now. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I cause those chains now in the name of Jesus. Bring them out. Shake the inside and outside. I decree and declare. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Please, quickly, quickly, quickly. Let's have them outside. Ushers, you should know that, please. So that we can hurry up and make progress. Shalibros Kabaruda Shalakatos Kebriandas. Alusha Brenda Gadish. We are still going to pray. I'm seeing fire. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing it come on people, not just on chains, feet now. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, every overflow, those following online. This shout of the name of Jesus again. I'm seeing families. What looks like a door on that chain it must leave right now one two three i command every chain chain of darkness dying down people in the mighty name of jesus christ be free now i in the chain holy I need a chains for I need a chains. I need a chains for me. Every I need a chains. I need a chains for me. Hear me. The Bible says, "Now the Lord is that spirit. The Lord is that spirit." The same spirit that delivers, that heals, the Lord is that spirit, not another. It is the same Lord that gives salvation, that heals. The Lord is that spirit. Hallelujah. I want to rebuke barrenness. Now, first physical barrenness. But then this barrenness is more than just physical barrenness. 
a state of unproductivity. And as I pray this prayer, many ladies prophetically, the power of God will come upon you, not necessarily because you are barren, but women stand as gates in the realm of the spirit. And God uses them to signify the opening of gates. In the name that is above all names, I declare right now, even as the Lord is revealing to me, there are all kinds of barrenness in this place. Physical barrenness, financial barrenness, spiritual barrenness. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, at the count of three right now, that anointing is coming on people inside and outside. Those with physical barrenness issues, God is stepping in right now. And those with all kinds of related barrenness issues, God is also stepping in. At the count of three, I declare it right now. One, two, three. Let that power touch you right now. I release you. I release you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I release you by prophecy. I release you. Enter a dimension of fruitfulness. I speak it to your life. I speak it to your business. I place the word upon you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Madam, please stop this woman for me. Madam, please come. Your life is about to change. I don't know who this woman is. From the town. Come again, ma'am. From Sabo, from Sabo. From Sabo. I want to pray for you. Number one, please look at me, madam. The pain you experience at your back, huh? that back pain, the Lord is taking it away. Number Amen. two, Amen. God is stepping into your family. Amen. I'm looking at your family and I'm seeing that Amen. your family needs a real miracle. This is, this is an array of witchcraft. And if we don't pray to take lives, people will die like chickens. But we're going to pray. Now I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing Kogi State. Kogi State. The power of God is coming upon Kogi State right now. Right now I'm speaking. The power of God is a sign and a wonder how God does this, ladies and gentlemen. Kogi State. You see, for those of you who don't know, when God shows me that, the moment I mention the state, everyone who is part of that state, that anointing will touch them. It's, it's a sign and a wonder is a grace i declare right now whether you know your state or not i'm seeing that map and i send the word i declare by the spirit let that anointing i'm seeing fire rising call this state shalis kobarakata prateka teka toka parukata embregedesha i command liberty by the spirit of the living god i command liberty by the power of the holy ghost that every planting that is not of God associated with that territory. I call for liberty now, now by the Spirit. Mama, please let me pray for you. I'm going to pray for you, Ma, and it will be like a dream. The way God will honor you and take away sorrow from your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for our mother. Honor this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, Mama, I declare over you in the name of Jesus, let everything that looks like shame and reproach and sorrow over you and your family, I cast it out of your life right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jennifer. 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 I'm hearing the name Jennifer. We have to really... Jennifer Where are you from? Huh? 
I've seen this thing before and I've announced it in miracle service. There is something called Aleku. You, you understand what I'm saying? I'm seeing that name again. Where are you coming from? Where is she from? State. You are from Benway yes, State. Yes, we have Aleku there. What? Eh? Aleku. This is what I'm saying. I, know you now. I command that devil out of her life now by the power of the Holy Ghost. See, listen, the Bible says even the captives of the mighty the lawful captives shall be delivered. Every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it. Every challenge relative to the grace that confronts it. My friend, this gentleman, tap him for me. Don't worry, let me talk with him. Look at me. The Lord is going to use you mightily. Huh? I'm stretching my hands now. I'm seeing an anointing coming on you. Amen. Number one, the grace for intercession. Amen. Number two, the teaching ministry. Amen. I decree and declare. Amen. May you step into that dimension Amen. in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I shift you by prophecy into that dimension in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm seeing one mama outside, overflow one. The Lord is showing me an elderly woman. It's like you came with your daughter or something. You didn't come alone. Please, if there's such a woman, there come. I'm seeing the Lord is showing me a woman. You came together with your daughter. We have to hurry up because we're going to pray for the sick now. Mighty God. This young lady, look at me, my dear. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! That's the end of it. I release you right now from everything that represents captivity. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where are you coming from, Mama? I'm from seeing Abuja. Hold on. You came by road? Yes, sir. Kaduna. Abuja, where do you stay? I stay in a... Where are you from? From part of Niger. It's Abuja? A... Yes. Like a boundary? Yes, sir. And that's where you are coming from? Yes, I want to pray for you. The spirit of death will leave your life and your family. Amen! My dear, this is your daughter? Is that lady your daughter? Yes, sir. I'm going to pray because this lady as young as she's seen, God is going to use her. There is a grace for favor that is on this lady, you see. Favor, favor, that's your name. No, it's not like I'm doing an impartation. Huh? Your name is what? What's her name? Favor. Hear me, my dear. The Lord is going to turn your life. You see this lady like this? Don't worry about what you are eating or not eating. You hear what I'm saying? This lady, God is going to honor her. The first miracle God is going to do to your daughter is in her brain. Amen. Because this has been your prayer. Eh? Yes, sir. She's yes, not sir. doing very well in At school. All. This, listen now, let me talk to you. This lady is not a bad lady. She loves, she's a serious lady and a very good and disciplined lady. But this is an attack. I will pray for her. She will go back and you will marvel and wonder at what will happen to this lady. My dear, come, favor. Don't cry, eh? You came for miracle service. Father, the Bible declares that the memory of the just is blessed. I bless your mind. Understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. A family of four ladies, the chain of marital delay is breaking now. No, 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 it's, it's not everybody. I'm, I'm praying that this is an exact prayer to someone right now. I'm seeing, I, I just held this lady and the Lord showed me four, one, two, three, four ladies. <laughs> By the power of, please, why are they, don't, please don't bring people out that have not called, please. Why are they here? Huh? Where is she from? Overflow one. Okay, this is your daughter. Come, mama. Where are you from? Where are you coming from? We are from Patatusa. 
You are from quarter two. Quarter two. Yes, sir. I have to pray for you. There's somebody here, when it's time to pray, please, no matter what overflow you are in, um, I want to pray for you by myself. When they look at you, they will think you are pregnant. Like, very evidently pregnant, but you are not pregnant. This is, I don't know what this is. This thing is just protruding like this. The power of God is coming on that person. And that, that demonic thing, I curse it by the God of heaven. He must let you go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Mama, can I pray for you? In the name of Jesus, I'm praying for you, man. That everything that wants to cut short your life, number one, I come against it. In the name of Jesus. And then number two, I'm praying for you. It's time for you to reap from the fruit of your labor. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Who is this? Why is she here? Okay, Jennifer. What's wrong with her? Huh? She's not feeling fine. Okay, we'll, we'll pray for the sick. Ah, we have to pray. Oh. Is she mad? She's just not. Okay. It's before that she was mad, but now she's like that. She was mad before. Yes. When uh, it has been now uh, one, let's say eight months. Okay. When she came here, so she cannot talk and uh, other like that. She used to. This means when she's talking, so she no talk normally. Okay, we'll pray. We are going to minister to the sick. We have to. If not, we'll, we'll take all the night here. But we'll pray for her. Can she hear me, my dear? How are you? You can hear me. Yes. I will pray for you, eh? and Jesus will heal you. Because I'm already seeing this lady inside a coffin. With what I'm seeing, this lady will not cross this year. They will just say, survive by. But there is a God in heaven. Ah. Hallelujah. We have to pray. I hope they are not just coming out at random. Do we have... Huh? I didn't ask them to come out. I said, protocol, you people should be able to walk with the people. So that we don't have... You are the one? Come. Where are you from? Paladin. Paladin. Yes. Place your hand on your stomach. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. You believe in the power of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Have you gone to the hospital? Yes, sir. I've done many scans. What did they tell you is there? Nothing. Nothing. And yet the stomach is growing and you're not pregnant. Yes. Are you married? About to, sir. About to marry. Is your husband here? Yes, sir. Husband, come. Where is he? The Lord wants to save him big major marital problem now <laughs> husband sir come thank you eh? please don't be embarrassed we love you god just wants to save you very little things like this can tear marriage not into two into pieces and want to want to help them where are you coming from sir from somewhere to say what are you trusting God for? Healing, sir. Um, God provision for the word. Healing and God provision. Provision? Yes, sir. Uh, are you working? No, sir. Did you apply for a job? Yeah, I've been applying, sir. Because I'm looking, the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing a letter. This is what I'm, I'm saying. We are going to pray. This is your first time here? No, I've been coming. Okay, been, okay. I will pray for your wife first, then. Eh? If not, um, I hope I'm not, I'm not a prophet of doom, eh? but God is trying to save you from what will make you hate someone you are loving so much now. My dear, you love Jesus, put your hand there. In the name of Jesus Christ. You, you see how these kind of demonic things are. The stomach is protruding and the machine is not even saying there's fibroid or something. At least if it says there's something, you know what to remove. The machine is showing that this woman is perfectly healthy, yet her stomach is protruding. If you don't understand now, you can put this innocent brother in trouble. You understand what I'm saying? You see how the devil works? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare now, watch the power of God. Ah, the power of God. Oh, this let me tell you the anointing is very powerful it's not for showmanship it's like a drug 
just enters your system and it will rubbish anything that is not God I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit madam let me tell you the truth you will not waste even if it's one day to be pregnant when it's time I'm saying this by the Spirit of God and this I'm seeing like a black band tied around your stomach I lose it right now and I release you I set you free from this in the name of Jesus my friend I pray for you look at me sir you believe in Jesus the budget I'm seeing is very much you have not even gone you have not gone near halfway the budget eh? don't be embarrassed I'm not embarrassing you you need a real miracle this one is not just a destiny helper you need a miracle because with what I'm seeing that you wrote as a budget Kai when is the wedding 12th October 12th of October God is faithful eh? I will pray with you the prophetic dimension of wealth truly there is father I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit surprise this my dear brother more than enough for your wedding in the name of Jesus Christ and I declare be healed right now be healed completely in the name of Jesus be healed completely your name is Jennifer okay I'll pray with you come I'll just lay hands on you all this Jennifer I'll just lay hands I'm not getting any hold her collect the child please father in the name of Jesus Christ take away this reproach that I see in this family in the name of Jesus Christ I declare that the Lord is giving you a new beginning in Jesus name please come quickly in the name of Jesus come my dear may the Lord bless you and honor you come reproach is taken from your life in the name of Jesus the power of God is coming on one ushering lady it's an ushering lady I'm seeing a mighty deliverance reproach is living right now by the spirit whether inside or outside I'm seeing one ocean lady the power of God is coming upon her father in the name of Jesus let that miracle take away reproach in the name of Jesus Christ take away reproach you are Jennifer in the name of Jesus I pray for you in the name of Jesus I pray for you my dear my dear hold her hands two of you just do what I'm asking you to do shout Jesus as loud as you can because both of you need the same miracle and God is giving you that miracle He's terminating shame completely from your life there is I'm seeing a man here you are a pastor I know there are many pastors I can presume but who is a pastor here sir please come you are a pastor where sir come again I'm seeing what do you have I'm, I can't get let him come I'm seeing you You came from where, sir? Benin. Benin. I want to pray for you. Have your church. I want to pray for you. Please stand up, sir. Stand up. You are going to write a book. The Lord is going to anoint you and you will write a book. God will use that book to bless the body and honor you too. It's a grace that I'm praying for you. Number two, sir. I'm seeing the Lord strengthening your understanding. There's a teaching grace that God is releasing upon you. I don't know you and I'm praying for you. And then I'm praying for you. You will see the miraculous in a very strange way. You may not lay hands on people like this, but the spoken word, as you are speaking, you will see God begin to honor you and things begin to happen. Can I pray for you, sir? In the name of Jesus, I release you into these dimensions in the spirit. And everything that has been said, I command that it must come to pass for you by the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is releasing speed. Now, please hear this. I want to pray. I know that I always pray for this, but I'm about to pray right now. There is a very strong anointing and it's coming on people inside and outside. There are people who have compassed certain realms. God wants to shift them. Please help them. As that anointing comes, 
sometimes they are going to begin to run by the spirit just run like this inside or outside father i'm the ah, my god i decree and declare right now by the spirit of god the grace that brings speed 10 years in one 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 by the spirit of the living god i command speed for you 10 years in one in the mighty name of jesus christ i declare speed over your life in the mighty name of Jesus I declare it you're not wasting your time you are receiving speed in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ you are a pastor come it's time to enter a new dimension step into a new level of grace I shift you by the power of the Holy Ghost signs and wonders through your hands in the name of Jesus I shift you into a new realm in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing the anointing of the Holy Spirit going to the media stand just that media stand I'm seeing and it's still the same grace for speed I'm seeing media stand I'm seeing that grace there are people entering strange realms of speed that God is bringing. I release you by this word of prophecy. Step into that dimension. In the name of Jesus, no power in existence will stop you. Hallelujah. My dear, come. This lady on red. Come, quickly, please. I'm seeing you laughing in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is saying I should release you to your seasons of laughter. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak over you and I declare whatever must happen in your life for laughter to break out. I'm declaring to you in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God. Let it happen to you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are two ladies and three gentlemen. The real grace for the prophetic the prophetic I will do an impartation by the end of the Sabbath but two ladies and three men a real grace real grace the eyes the eyes to see I quicken that grace quicken that anointing by the power of the Holy Ghost Hallelujah. Grace. Please don't think we are wasting our time. We are going to pray for the sick. My dear, come. This lady, God is visiting your family. Come and stand here. Where are your people? Where did they stay? Samaru. In Samaru here. Let me tell you, the month of September is a strange month of lifting for your family. You believe that? Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, see let me teach you something you see the word of God is very powerful believe it believe it don't, don't sit arguing and saying will God touch me will it change my life no God will more than surprise you father in the name of Jesus I'm praying for this lady and I decree and declare The Lord grant you this miracle in the name of Jesus. The Lord is touching someone at overflow two. Overflow two. And the Lord is saying he's taking reproach away. Taking reproach. I'm seeing the power of God come upon someone. Overflow two. In the name of Jesus Christ. Overflow two.
Hallelujah. We are going to pray for the sick shortly. But I'm seeing... Wow. Usually, I would, not, I would not be the person to talk about these things, but when God does it, uh, we, are, we, we serve his purposes. I'm seeing a grace for miracle alert. This is why I kept quiet, because you will be surprised. That means you will see a lot inside a lot of monies. There was no transaction to have necessitated it. Now, God does not do this to sponsor laziness, but it's a prophetic dimension. This is what I just saw. I declare by the Spirit of God, Father, every once and again you do this in this house to bring glory to your name. I pray by the Spirit of the living God right now, in the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. For many of us, what will come upon you will, will take away financial pain, financial shame in the name of Jesus Christ. My friend, what do you do? Come, this man, this. What do you do? A businessman, sir. A businessman. Where? In Dandume, sir. Come again. Dandume, Dandume, Katsina State. Katsina State. Yes. In Dandume, I want to pray for you. You love Jesus? Yes, sir. Don't let anybody, don't be embarrassed, eh? Don't let anybody tell you to do anything diabolic for business favor. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? Does it make sense to you? Yes, sir. I yes, hope you're not embarrassed. Yes, sir. That, don't let anybody tell you that this is what he did that worked. And you too, you should do it and customers will come. It's not true. Listen, let me tell you, Paul can plant, Apollo can water. It's only God that brings increase. I want to pray for you. Father, what's your name? Sunday. Naemeka. What's that? Is there a name like that? Naemeka. Naemeka. I'm hearing that name. I will pray for you, sir. But the Lord is bringing, I'm seeing the Lord bring a very strange miracle to the person with that name. In the name of Jesus, I take away stagnation from your business. I release you by the power of the Holy Spirit into abundance and into plenty. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing the hand of God coming on several people for ministry. But listen now. This doesn't mean that you just get up and go and start doing ministry, but the call of God has been lingering on your life and it's time to answer that call. I'm stretching my hands. Lord, I don't know where these people are. Overflow one, overflow two, overflow three. Online, in the main auditorium here, Father, anyone that your call up is upon his or her life, I'm praying, oh God, confirm that call right now and let them know that it's not just their imagination i declare by the anointing and by the spirit of god draw them into their various callings into the various mantles the trainings the seasons that they must enter in the realm of the spirit to become mighty men and women of god in the name of jesus christ What's your name? Okay, I'll pray for you. In the name of Jesus, may God grant you speed. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, huh? I take away everything in your mind that will stop you from being productive. I shift you to experience the hand of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We'll pray for the sick now. But I'm seeing a ring in the spirit. Enter the hand of a lady and then the ring breaks almost immediately. Now you know that this is already, it may be symbolic of marriage, but a disastrous thing happening that just scatters it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't know who that person is, but I'm praying right now. That anything that will push you into marriage to only last months old, in the name of Jesus, 
I curse it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. I curse it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing an anointing, my God. Come for direction. Especially geographic direction. The Lord is showing me that there are people who came here praying. They don't know exactly where to be based. This is this this sounds funny, but the Lord, there is an anointing that is coming, giving you clear direction in dreams, visions, prophetic intuitions. Some of you are saying, Lord, should I stay? Should I go? Should I travel? Should I stay in the country? Out of the country, I'm praying right now. The grace for accurate direction. In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. We're going to pray for the sick now and all kinds of situations that don't represent the counsel of God. We have to pray and trust God. We're going to do this very, very, very fast. I keep seeing something in this front row, just these people in front. I kept ignoring it, but I don't know what I'm seeing. I'm seeing something that God is showing me. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was lost. Restoration shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen. There is somebody here. The Lord is bringing an anointing into your life. You are getting into oil. Listen, listen I'm serious now. Please listen to what I'm saying. This can be a life and death prayer. You see, this spirit of death that is just sweeping around, killing people like chickens all around someone will just say headache and fall down and die i pray for you in the name of jesus christ i forbid the earth from receiving your body i forbid the earth from receiving your body and i declare every spirit of kidnapping whether in zaria here kaduna that will just allow wicked people to come and kidnap innocent people. We, we cause that spirit and we bring the perpetrators under judgment. Two more prayer points were done. The dimension of the demonstration of the spirit signs wonders, miracles the gifts of the spirit I call that dimension whatever dimension is missing in your life I speak to you, please hear me especially if you are in ministry right now and here tonight step into that dimension dreams visions the prophetic, the gifts of the spirit being activated in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for everyone who is weary. You are tired. Life has just wrestled with your spiritual fervency. And it's as though you are about to give up. It's like the grace to continue is not there. By the Spirit of God, I supply fresh fire for the journey. Every leader here, whether a campus leader, prayer group leader, Bible study leader, church pastor, whatever kind of group I pray for you. The dimension of grace that will keep the fire in your groups, your fellowship burning, I supply that grace upon you now. We prophesy over Zaria. We speak to the spiritual borders of this city. 
to fight anyone coming into this city to cause trouble or cause confusion in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for you every request and every issue that was the reason why you came here I agree with you in the name of Jesus that the next time you come here it will be to testify Jesus and any man who says over his dead body for you to rise may their prayer be answered this night thank you Jesus let me pray the last prayer of restoration I just sense it in my spirit whatever has left your life that should not have left whether it's money you lost money you lost friends, you lost valuable relationships. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the Spirit of God, I call it back into your life now. I call it back into your life now. Praise the Lord. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, we are late but we cannot close this meeting without giving me an opportunity to hand my life totally to Jesus. Please, let's minimize movement. This for me, I believe, truly without exaggeration, is the greatest miracle. I know that there are people here under the sound of my voice who are saying, Apostle, I want to make my ways right with Jesus. You are here, overflow one, two, three, four. I want to give you an opportunity in two minutes. Please run overflow three now you can just move to your projector stand and overflow four because of time but if you are here overflow one two two b and then online please make your way here quickly let's celebrate them as they come you're saying apostle i want to win that war my friend keep stretching your leg carefully here eh? you don't have to yes you the man with the crutch Keep coming, quickly, please. If there are people coming from outside, please clear the way for them so that they hurry up. Clear the way very quickly for them. Hallelujah. You're joining them. Please join them quickly. I believe there are still more people. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you and telling you to not let this meeting. The Bible says it's the goodness of God that calls men to repentance. Praise the Lord. If you're joining them, come, come quickly. Now, I salute every one of you. Thank you so much for making this decision. For those making this decision online, we salute you. Very quickly, I will request that you lift your right hand and please pray after me. Do it truthfully and passionately. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight, if you're joining them, please join quickly. Please clear the way for them. Say after me, Lord Jesus, tonight I declare that I cannot help myself. I declare that I believe that you are my Savior, you are my King, you are my Lord. Tonight I receive by faith the abundance of grace, the gift of of righteousness and I declare that I reign in this life from today and forever I have eternal life I'm a child of God forward ever and backward never amen please keep those hands lifted father we thank you the Bible declares that whosoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away thank you for bringing this one so God to make their declaration we declare according to the authority of scripture that a new life begins for them tonight a life of victory a life of grace in the name of Jesus we thank you because they will go from glory to glory and from strength to strength in Jesus name I pray amen and amen thank you 
now there's a gentleman waving his hands at the back please all of you just follow the gentleman in concert and there will be a group of people to receive you very quickly thank you for your patience dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.